Welcome to DAX Machina. Join us as we explore the mysteries of this world. Cryptids, monsters, macabre tales, and horror stories abound. Could they be true? Are monsters real? Good evening, folks, and thank you guys for joining us on another edition of DAX Machina. Oh, well, joining us in the studio tonight are the, the uh, wonderful ladies from Blondes and Booze. We are going to be digging into some of the weird crap that's been going on around the state of Missouri the last few months and over the last few hundred years. Uh, there's a lot to cover tonight. We are going to jump into this here in just a moment. But I want to you know, get, let everybody uh, pop in and say and say howdy and tell everybody hello and let us know what's going on. So, hey, folks, how are you, how are you all doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are y'all doing? Wonderful. We had a doc sighting. I'm I'm doing real good. Doing good. Spent all day out in the field today, checking a few things out that we've been wondering about, and uh, now I'm still I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Trapes around the woods, and now here I am. <laughs> I really wish I'd have been up there with you. It sounds like you had a great time. I did. I did. I did. My my daughter is really you know she's a real trooper. She's like mom. Do, do you really think we need to stop here? I'm like, yes, we need to stop here. <laughs> Robbie, what have you been up to today, brother? <laughs> went up to my eyeballs and es funeral escorts and toy tot or toy <laughs> run, toys for tot run escorts and wrecks and all, all just all kinds of fun and games. It's all fun in the police world, isn't it? Oh gosh, always is. Never a dull moment. Money, just all the good stuff. <laughs> we uh, we've been uh, without Doc without a Doc sighting for the last yeah. couple of weeks. Doc has finally finished his uh, worldly travels for the for the remainder of the year, so we man. may have him for a little bit. Yeah, ain't that the truth, man? It's so good to be home. Lord have mercy. I don't I don't have I don't worry about walking into the wall or, you know, waking up and. Wondering where the hell I am every night. So that's awesome. <laughs> hey, looks like we had somebody joining us from Sydney, Australia tonight. Foxtail's in the house. I see that. Welcome to the show. Good day, yeah. Foxtail. Um, I had one of those uh, late night uh, weird weird text things where I, I texted Doc another one of those, hey, fuck, are you awake comments. <laughs> <laughs> it was late and I was writing. I'm like, oh shit, what have I done? Well, let's see. Yeah. Box awake. Where was I? That was when I was yeah, in Texas. You were in College Station, Texas when yeah. I texted you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I sent him this almost panic text. I'm like, hey, you awake? I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Holy crap. I do, that. I do that to Krista. I'm like, I'll text her and I'm like, hey, I got an idea. <laughs> you know, and some, and some she's, she's up. She's on the phone talking about the idea. <laughs> right. yeah, and, and I and I know DA's an, uh, a night owl, so I was just I was just getting ready to lay down, and I heard my phone, you know, buzz. And it's like, hey, fuck, are you awake? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not awake. That's my that's, that's my answer. That's, nope. his, that's, his, that's his customary greeting when he's when he's. Written himself into a corner, <laughs> into a metaphor. I'm like, all right, read this and tell me if I'm in, if how screwed I am. And he's like, right, well, it depends. Are you trying to kill this guy? I'm like, yeah. no, he needs to survive. <laughs> how does he get yeah. out? Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> like, tell me how to get out of this one. <laughs> Is he still alive? Hey, the character will survive, but it, yeah, thanks to Doc's magic. Yeah. Well, there you go. All the antibiotics. All the antibiotics. <laughs> Push everything you got. That's right. Hmm. That's not the first time Doc and I have had a conversation like that. No. No. We it was we, at two o'clock one morning. I texted you. I'm like, hey, what do you know about artificial blood? And I just get that, give me a second, let me get my glasses. Yeah, we had <laughs> it turned into a it turned down into her like an hour and a half conversation and we yeah. came up with some pretty cool stuff so yeah hey that conversation's even made it into one of the books yes it has <laughs> yes it has so yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool doc and i had some, had some pretty weird late night common uh, conversations when i i get to writing on a project <laughs> oh always good to be involved and be of help yep 
or try to at least. Mm. <sighs> Mercy. Well, it, that that is kind of off on a tangent. We were, you know, that's more you know, about the books than about weird crap in Missouri. But I guess I can, I, you know, considering how my brain works, I could be considered part of the weird crap in Missouri. <laughs> Hey, there's two more of us on here that could do that too, you know. <laughs> Speaking of weird crap in Missouri, have any of you read the book Weird in Missouri? Yes. Mm -mm. That is such a cool book. Mm -mm. And I can't I think of what what's the author's name. He he came to uh, an event we did here uh, three years ago at the ranch, our first one that we did. And I can't think of what his name was. He came and spoke. I thought I had a copy of that book, but I got yeah. to looking for it just a little bit ago, and then it dawned on me that I just checked it out from the library. So I went on Amazon and found a copy of it and threw it in the, yeah. the threw it in the in the cart, and I'm like, "Honey, can I get this book?" So <laughs> we'll, we'll see what she says. She hasn't gotten back to me yet. Can't think of what his name is. Give me a little bit, and I will think of it because he was a speaker for us. Hmm. I probably have like a thousand dollars or something sitting in my Amazon cart. Oh, at any given time, we've got that in spades. <laughs> yeah, I just throw it now. in there, and I'm like, I'll get that later. I'll get that later. Same. Yeah, especially now with uh, Christmas coming, you know, I throw stuff in there and then choose as I get paid, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right, and then, or then you go back and like, uh, no, I don't really want that. And then yeah, just throw it out. Really need this. That's yeah. where you pick and choose and save for later. Yes. <laughs> or what you can yeah. afford. <laughs> yeah, I'm always putting something weird in the cart. Well, actually, this was one of the weird things I put in the cart. I found a, a collection <laughs> of, of Bigfoot uh, uh, Bigfoot Hawaiian print shirts, and I just started putting them in the closet, and, and, and Annette comes in and goes, you know you're not wearing those out in public, right? And I'm like, oh, yes, I am. <laughs> That's yeah. It wouldn't be you if you weren't wearing them, see? Yeah, just... I love my obnoxious shirts. <laughs> Yeah. So, Chris, Chris Barania, this is a question for both of you. How long have you two been really into the paranormal? I mean, that's something I, I thought I'd brought up before, but I got to thinking about it, and I really didn't remember asking that. Well, mine started many, many, many years ago for me. I was actually in high school, and my school was new. And uh, I was walking in the halls with some friends. Well, actually, one friend. And... Um, there was a, a man that walked by us and he, he looked like 80, 90 year old guy. And I was like, that's kind of weird. Who's that old guy here for, you know, just kind of joking. And my friend looked at me and she's like, what do you mean? She didn't see him. I'm like, Oh, that's kind of weird. So I was kind of freaked out about it. And ever since then, I, I've had a passion for the paranormal. And then um, I have a friend who lived in a haunted or who still lives in a haunted house to this day. And um, I had some weird encounters there. And then, um, we, we called in a, a team, a paranormal team to investigate and um, come to find out it was my, my old paranormal team that I was part of for many years. And um, from then on, I've, I, I've been doing it serious now for uh, probably 14, 15 years now. Nice. Mm -hmm. Randy, what about you? Well, um, I, I can't even tell you what, when it began. My... Um... My mom's side of the family, all the ladies in the family ha were heavily into it. So I was actually born into it. And just seeing things my whole entire life has just been normal, I guess, and different things happening. And um, I, ca I can't really put a finger on my first experience because there had been so many that, you know, you would just shrug off and go, oh, well, that's normal. Um, but getting in and investigating and really digging deep into it hasn't actually been that long. I say, I would say it's been about five years. Yeah. Five what's, years. what's kind of funny how Brandy and I met actually, she uh, yeah. used to attend my old team's events. So yeah. And we, we met through uh, uh, an event and well, actually, no, it was at, uh, just a swim party. Mm -hmm. Remember, it was just a, a just a get together, and I got invited, and that's how we met. So yeah. that was it. it was meant to be. It was. It was meant, definitely meant to be. <laughs> uh, before we go too much farther, I wanted to ask, and, and then we can mention it, you know, to, to everybody that's in the audience. How's Erin doing? Um, I have not talked to her today. I did reach out; she did not answer, and I've texted her, and she did not reply. So, as of yesterday, she was in still in a lot of pain. 
but um, she's got to go see a specialist, but she, she is doing better. She appreciates the prayers for sure from everybody. Well, folks, that's Erin Eck, the, uh, one of the, the founding members of Blondes and Booze. She's having some some serious medical issues right now, and would certainly mm -hmm. appreciate all your prayers. And uh, and also remember Miss Lene, who's always in the in the chat. She yeah. is uh, not going to be with us tonight. She is not feeling well. Uh, so if you keep the two of them in your prayers, that would be very much appreciated. For sure. Yep. So. What do you want to talk about first about Weird Missouri? There is just so much to choose from. Yeah, there I is. Know. But let's let's start with the most recent. Let's start with the the hunter guy down Brandy's area. Oh, oh absolutely. Oh. Yeah, that's the perfect place to start because that just segues into all the other weird crap that's happened right, right along that corridor. Yep. This this story has really got me fuzzled. Now, I live down in this area and I live approximately about 40 miles from where this had happened. So, you know, I'm going to go look, that's just me. <laughs> I'm going to go find out, you know, I don't know where exactly he was cause they're not going to tell you of course, but I wanted to see the terrain and everything else of, of where, you know, that he, he might've been. And I, you know, I'm not saying that he, he they said he, he, he died of hypothermia. I'm not believing that. I am not believing that at all. Um, they said they found his gun laying laying down by the river, and me being, uh, you know, a hunter, if I'm if I'm tracking a deer or anything, I never would lay my gun down and leave it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't leave it there to be, you know, just lay uh, leave it laying there for someone to find when you're gone anyway. Exactly. No, I'm not going to do that. They said they had found deer blood. How do they know it was deer blood? Because they announced that right. before they even had the testing done. How do you know it's deer blood? Yeah, you right. find a you gun don't. next to blood, I'm not going to assume it's deer. Right. Somebody, and asked, they, somebody asked real quick what area of Missouri. It's it's Van Buren, Missouri. Clay County. Clay County. Not Clay County. That's up by Kansas City. Or, I'm sorry. Um, Carter. Carter County. Carter County. I keep messing them up. Don't ask me why. <laughs> just, just correct me. I don't know. But it, it's Carter County. And, um, it, you know, they said that that he fell in, in a, a, a ditch or something uh, full of water. And that's how he had gotten hypothermia. Uh, first of all, how do they know? They didn't find him straight away. And they didn't find him, I think, for like almost two days. Now, mm -hmm. in those two days, he could have dried. How, how are you going to know if he fell in the water, yeah. if his clothes and everything are dry? Right. Uh, you know, there there's a that, lot of nonsense. The nights he was uh, gone? Uh, in the articles and everything. It was just a lot of nonsense. I'm like, this is not making sense. And they, they also said that they didn't find, well, they didn't say how they found his body. They don't, they didn't right. say if he had any injuries or anything. It was just kind of left blank. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, yeah. finding blood and a dead I man. Also, I also read somewhere, and I, I honestly, I don't remember where I read it, but his family is questioning a lot of that too. Oh, well, yeah. I would too. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I would definitely be questioning it. Well, yeah. number one, the, the first thing is the gun. I mean, no hunter is going to lay their gun down and just walk away. Nope. But number two, if I remember correctly, those two nights weren't cold enough that Willie really would have caused hypothermia. Even right. accounting for falling in the water, every deer hunter I know worth their salt will dress. One, dress for the occasion. It's not like you went out there in shorts and a t-shirt to deer hunt. And exactly. two, have the, at least the basic ability to start a fire. You right. know, whether you take a, a, a cigarette lighter or you know, I always kept, carried like a, a Ziploc bag of uh, dryer lint in my hunting pocket mm -hmm. and, and matches you know, in a Ziploc bag in case I needed to start a fire. Uh, if you're going to go out there to spend time in the woods as a hunter, you've got to be prepared for the eventuality. Something might happen and you don't get back out there as you planned. So right. he would have had a knife to, to, to skin okay. and to get the deer. He'd have had, you know, just basic equipment and it had been dressed warm. So I, I'm not buying the hypothermia. Thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let, let, let me, let me break in here with some science stuff here and, and uh, some medical stuff. Cause this has got my brain turning. Have they found the body? Yes. 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 Okay. How far away yeah. from, from the ditch that he allegedly fell into was the body? They didn't mm. say, they, and didn't, they say. didn't say the condition the body was in. 
Okay, and I'm also wondering how far the gun was from the body. Was the gun away from the body after he fell in the ditch, or was it on? Well, you know, did he fall in the I ditch think, and, the gun and then the body? I think the report said is they found the gun and everything first. Yeah, yep, they, yeah, they, they found the gun there. on the first initial search. Yep. When he didn't yeah. come uh, yeah. back, they sent. But they, they didn't find him. Out. They didn't, okay. find, they didn't him. find him. They found the, the blood. They found the gun, but didn't blood. find him. And they, guess, they found him correctly. The article said they went back out the next day and found him. All right. He'd miss, he don't been missing two days because he'd only been gone a day when they went out went out the uh, uh, search and rescue the first time. All right. So mm -hmm. hypothermia starts at ninety six degrees. Um, that's uh, ninety five. Ninety five ish actually. Ninety five degrees. That's mild hypothermia. But if you're wet. Uh, if there's any kind of wind blowing, ambient humidity is up, things like that, that can, that can bring it on a lot faster. But I, I mean, I, and if he got confused from the hypothermia, I'm not debunking anything. I'm just trying to throw some other stuff in here. Um, if, if he got confused, which can happen at moderate hypothermia, which is below 93, 92 degrees, then he could have, he could have dropped his gun. I mean, that, that's, that is a possibility. So I'm just, I'm just curious how, where all the puzzle pieces are, because we got a lot of puzzle pieces here and a lot of unanswered questions, and that kind of makes right. it sound a little. They don't, they don't really give a timeline. They don't, okay. they don't no. give a timeline because they They're don't. Very vague. Like I said, mm. the uh, the police report that the news is releasing. Let me just go with that. Um, they're saying that. He was far, he had to have been far away from the gun because when they found the gun, they searched that complete area and he was nowhere to be found. Yeah. Now, I know how easy it is to get disoriented in, in the woods sometimes, you know, especially if, you know, you're just not paying attention as you go in. I usually, I mark my, my way in. I have little tags that I stick on trees. They're orange. So I yeah. know how to find my way out. But I also will not go into the woods and not have another hunter with me ever yeah. you know yeah. there's yeah. another hunter and they could be you know they could be hundreds of yards away or you know or closer but i know that they're there we you know we always go in pairs yeah absolutely that's safety in numbers type of thing mm -hmm. and i'm not and i'm not being argumentative i'm just curious because like i said there's i'd like to know a timeline and you know where this was found where this was found you know where the ditch was he fell into and all that kind of stuff because that could that could shed some light on it but if they don't if they're not even saying the condition of the body and just saying hypothermia then yeah. that's a bit that's a little bit funky well they found blood and said it was a deer without it being tested hmm. so they said yeah. he was tracking the deer how do you know did you know he shot one because if he was there right. by himself and didn't have you know a, a buddy with him mm -hmm. how do you know that he was tracking it right right and so and DA, you said the weather wasn't wasn't super cold. How, I mean, how cold was it? I think it got down in the forties that night. Okay. Well, with him being looking, wet, looking I it mean, up for the area, forties is bad enough. But you know, I've I, I can tell you from working working overnight security and you know working uh, working uh, being in the military pulling guard duty. You know, I, I, I can remember being out in weather that cold without a whole lot of cold water, weather gear. And all mm -hmm. I really needed to do was keep moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I'd, like to, I'd like to hear the condition of the body more than anything. And I guarantee you, if I was out deer hunting, I had a coat on. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? We'll probably never hear of how the condition of the body is or was or, you know. They won't put yeah, and out. I don't know about anybody else, but I always take snacks and stuff with me. I've <laughs> I got a little lunchbox with me when I go. <laughs> I usually throw yeah. a few power bars in my cargo pocket. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. exactly. I mean, I, I I do have that, and and you know, a little bit of su survival stuff. You know, just a little bit, not not a whole lot. I mean, but me being a female, yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with somebody else, um, my and. You know, most of the, like my my family and everything, you you always knew where they were um, in that area. Cell phone service is is n it's not good if you get any at all. Um, right. I go kayaking and rafting in that area all the time. And uh, I, I, I can't even get a phone signal till I'm out of that town and headed home. Right. You know, it, it's I know when, I, when I was deer hunting every season. 
I had a small backpack that I always took that had basically just, you know, a couple of days worth of survival gear. It had a couple space blankets in it. It had a, a couple of MREs in it, basic fire starting kit. Uh, it was back before the, you know, days of life straws. I, 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 or, or I would have had one of those. But, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I had a, a hatchet, a couple of knives. You know, I had enough material where if I was not going to be able to make it back, that day I could survive just fine. Uh, yep. I used to keep one of those cheap ass, like four dollar Walmart tarps uh, and, and some twine in my bag, so I could make an emergency tent. I mean, you can buy those cheap plastic tarps that are like less than five bucks that come in a zip, yeah. that little Ziploc bag. Mm-hmm. I used to keep one of those in there, mm-hmm. and you know, worst case scenario, I would run some twine between two trees and throw that over there and stake it to the ground with sticks, and I got an instant shelter. So I yeah. always had some basic, you know, keep me alive for a day or two. Well, something because, uh, you know, in case you need somebody to get to you. Uh, so, you know, yeah. it just, it just doesn't make any sense to me that this guy would go out so completely unprepared yeah. that an overnight basic stay when the temperatures didn't even drop below freezing could be yeah. fatal. And if, and if the family's even having questions about it, it sounds like this guy might have been an experienced, you know, woodsman slash hunter and right. you know i think i would hope that some that he would realize the the dangers you know especially going out by yourself and maybe maybe you know or it and maybe carry the stuff with him or it could have been complacency too you know along with something weird i don't know well and, and, uh, my my thing is is who seriously sets their gun down to go track it because what if you come up on it and it's still not dead? Aren't you going to shoot it and kill it right then and there? Just to make sure. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So who leaves their gun to go track yeah. a deer? Yeah, that's you know? weird. Well, you know, even even if it, the, the, the case is the, the, the man got out there and he had a heart attack because he, he, he was a little bit older. So what if he got out there and, and had a heart attack, but they're already claiming it was hypothermia before they've even done an autopsy? Right. Uh, Nerd Babble says, what if he was running from something? Something spooked him and fear took over, fight or flight. Yep, exactly. Right. exactly. That's, a, that's a good point, too. Well, that's good. My thing is, is yeah, it, it, like Doc was saying, he had Doc, Doc said he, you know, he's got to be an experienced woodsman or experienced hunter. Number one, if this was his first ever hunt, why would he be out there by himself? If, it, if he was not experienced, why would he go out by himself? Uh, I know when I first started hunting as a kid, um, I, I would be in a, a deer stand and I'd have one of my family on a deer stand on either side of me, probably within a few hundred yards. Uh, so, you know, we knew where each other were. It wasn't until I got exactly. older in my late teens that I would go out to areas that I knew well and where they knew where I was at about by myself. Um, so I, I, I've got to believe that, you know, what Doc's saying, this guy had to be at least an experienced hunter, possibly mm-hmm. an experienced outdoorsman and could have survived a night out there under yeah. cold conditions and he wasn't young either i think i believe he was not that 58 is old but <laughs> he was that's 50. only six yeah. years older than me that's my yeah. brother's age yeah so you know i mean he wasn't a young guy that did not have experience you know right and like i said he you know he could like he could have had a heart attack you know I, the, any anything could have happened but like i said they were putting out a cause of death before they even did an autopsy and i'm like well they're, they're they must be really good because how are they going to know because mm-hmm. they had a prepared you know until they do the autopsy yeah. exactly exactly yep but that's where i was out there and messing around and seeing what was going on out there and and i'm i have to admit today uh, it was chilly there there was a chill going uh, you know the wind was coming across there and it was just running right through my clothes i was like yeah it's cold out here today but it, it's colder now than it was when that happened so it, it, it and the the trees are so dense that if you could get into those woods, that wind can't get through there as well. So I, you know, I I I don't know. I I I'm confused. I don't know. It just all depends on exactly where he was at. But they're not giving out that information. You know, they're not. They're just saying that it's over in Carter County. Um, Very basic all information is all they've released. There's nothing and I've heard there. nothing since. Mm-hmm. Nothing think, about nothing about it since. There's just something very hinky about this, and I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not gonna just jump in and go. It was encrypted, but you know, considering they haven't released the condition of the body, 
Uh, they found blood near the gun. Uh, it took the search and rescue more than a day to find the body. And they're immediately just, okay, this is what he died from without an autopsy. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes mm -hmm. you wonder if there's not something really weird with this that they don't want the general public to know, right. which leads me to another death. Weird circumstances surrounding a death is very yeah. similar to the Amazon driver. They, yep. they, they, the deputy sheriff executed the dogs on the scene, yet they've never released the details of the necropsy. They have not said whether or not those dogs had a human tissue in their in their in their uh, in their mm -hmm. in, in their digestive tract. Right. That has never been that that was never revealed. Uh, the dogs don't. I'm not even, it wasn't even really revealed that the dogs had blood on them. Right. Um, and here's however, the thing. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. The, I believe the homeowners were gone when that attack took place. Mm -hmm. When the police showed up, they went into the house and they said the dogs were aggressive. Well, obviously they will be. It's their home. They're protecting it. They've got all kinds of people in their home going crazy. So I had heard that they had shot the dogs. So in the you know, home. by now they, they would have tested to see if, if there's any human remains or anything it's like that. It's been weeks. There's plenty of time for them to have done a necropsy on the dogs. Yes. But it's never been released. Also, um, a little bird might have told me that uh, the county coroner for Ray County said that the body was in the worst condition he'd ever seen. Yep. That's mm. not, that doesn't sound like a typical dog attack. No. Right. And, well, I, I got a hold of the autopsy reports from the two two people that were killed in C County, Tennessee, and one of the one of the persons that was that was killed, the female, was missing forty percent of her body tissue. Wow. Forty percent. Yet they found they did release the necropsy on the dogs. There, no human tissue in the dog's stomach. So that the Amazon driver it strikes me as very similar what has what happened in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I haven't got a copy of the, of the of the autopsy report uh, from Ray County, but I did get a hold of the ones from Crook County, and I can tell you from my time in law enforcement, I have never seen a more lackluster uh, autopsy report. It was so vague. There, for one, there was no autopsy diagram, which is always included with the autopsy. There are no, there were no autopsy photos, which are always included with the autopsy. And it read like something that was just the autopsy reports just read like something that was really made for a press release. They, they were, they were not full of any of the details, any of the things you expect. Like, you know, we've got lacerations from the transverse art. None of that. There weren't descriptions right. of, of the of the wounds. It was just very bare bones. Yeah, and, yeah. and they, it was it was obviously very heavily redacted, and yeah. and it was the the autopsy reports contained what they were told to put in it. Um, it's it's wow. just something really really bizarre going on with this. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, even if the dogs were curious about after the attack, and the dogs were curious about what attacked it or who's laying out in the yard, they would have small amounts of blood on them anyway. Because you know how dogs are. they got to sniff everything. So even if they were out there. But somebody was taking care of those dogs. While the people were away, they were not starving to death. Right. So John Doe says they know, shot at the dogs outside the home upon finding them near the body. The dogs retreated into the homes and the police pursued and killed them. Gotcha. Yeah, but it never said that the, the dogs were dogs had blood on them. It was it was because it happened in their yard. Of course, the dogs would be out there. And, and Steve right. brings up a good point. Uh, he said, "If it's not strange, if it's strange enough, the talking about the autopsy report. If it's strange enough, they may not release the autopsy report. Or if they do, it'll be highly redacted. So you're kind of it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario where too much information will bring about questions, too little information will bring about questions. But at least with too little information, just a cause of death, you know, right. case right. closed." so to speak right yeah so, nobody nobody's ever really gonna know nobody's gonna know and the, and that's sad you know wow Holy nobody's God. really gonna know what's gonna happen so, yeah so it, and then within that area within that area we've had da had a sighting himself well, well we, we all had, had a, uh, a, dog all had an encounter out there at the, at the ranch uh yeah. but it was shortly just down the road from the mm -hmm. ranch where we had that sighting and whatever the hell that was mm -hmm. across the road um 
but you know that's what uh, where the Amazon driver was uh, killed was what twelve miles from the ranch or fifteen? It wasn't very. I, I would say. I, let me think about this a minute. I okay. It's eight miles from the ranch to, and then probably another ten miles. So about maybe eighteen miles. Okay, so yeah. within short driving distance, mm -hmm. and we all know that uh, that large predators like mountain lions and bears have a tremendous range that they hunt in. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the night of Friday, the 23rd of September, we were doing the Bigfoot bonfire uh, out at the, the, the Big River Horse Ranch. And I know we've talked about this on the show. For those of you who who, uh, who have heard this, I mean, you're going to get a recap. For those of you who haven't, uh, we're going to go over this again. Um, we, the, we were set, set up away from the ranch down in the woods. We were surrounded by trees on three sides. From the moment we got down there, we could hear something pacing us around, around the, in the woods around us. Uh, we had some really bright flashlights. I had a 3500 lumen uh, searchlight that I used to use as a cop. We couldn't find anything. Uh, there were several of us that were down there who were armed, uh, but we never saw anything. Uh, and at one point, Chris and my wife had stuff either being thrown at them or dropped on them uh, from the trees. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's bizarre. But then yeah. my wife and I and my son Noah and my adopted son Connor we're in my SUV heading back into Lexington to our hotel and about a mile up the road from the horse ranch, something crossed the road in front of us. And it wasn't like it darted just across the road in a split second. We saw it for about a good 30, 40 seconds because it wasn't in any hurry. Uh, it started coming out of the corn and I thought there was corn on cornfield on both sides of the road. The corn's now since been harvested, but at the time it was still pretty tall. What I see emerging from the trees at first, my gut saying deer because there's, we've seen and we've seen deer along the road run out the road out there. Um, what emerges though is way too big. It was gray in color, kind of a darkish gray, uh, and its eye shine was so bright that when it was looking at the vehicle, it was like on like almost emerald green in the center, but grew to white as the as the eye shine got brighter. And the eye shine was so bright it obscured the features of the head. I couldn't see the head. But it was built like an, it was built like either a large wolf or a large cat. But it was way too big to be a mountain lion. I mean, you could see the back legs were hocked like a like a dog's leg is. Yeah. Um, I, I don't recall seeing the tail. Uh, Annette says she believes she did, uh, but the back of this thing would have been about six inches to a foot taller than the top than the hood of my SUV. It emerged from the corn, and it really honestly it felt like it locked eyes with me. It was looking straight at us, which, you know, there isn't a reason for the phrase deer in the headlights. Deer will freeze, and my lights are on bright, and my little my little car, my little SUV has got one hell of a set of bright, of bright headlights. So I, we've got this thing completely illuminated, and as soon as I see it, I let my foot off the gas, because at the instant I saw it, I thought I'm going to hit a deer. I better start slowing down. But as this thing emerged out onto the road, it walked like a predator. It locked eyes with me, and it maintained eye contact the entire time it slowly crossed the road in front of us. And when it entered the corn, we were almost on top of it when it entered the corn on the other side. Um, yeah. And I, I'm, like, coming to a stop, and my wife's like, you better not get out of this car. Because <laughs> my plan was to go in the corn and see if I could find it, which probably wasn't the best plan, but I wasn't going unarmed. Dude, um, you've seen enough horror movies, that shit never ends well. <laughs> well, you know, I'm an idiot, though, so... You know, there's several people asking, wanting to know the area, and um, it, it was actually in Ray County, uh, Near Missouri, Lexington, Missouri, for DA's, well, yeah, DA's encounter and, and with us was in Lexington, Missouri, um, which is Lafayette County, but only eight miles away is Ray County, where the dog, Amazon. Amazon guy was attacked by something off Highway right. O, if anybody's familiar with that area. It's between... Uh, Richmond, Missouri, and Excelsior Springs, Missouri. Was it a fatality? Yes. Apparently, the the neighbor across the road had seen the Amazon truck sitting there, and they're the ones that called for help or something. And, and apparently, the man was, I don't know, out in the yard or something, if I remember correctly. Mm. Yeah, they said halfway between the truck and the house is where they found him. So yeah. it, they didn't see him laying in the yard because the truck was blocking it from the road view yeah yeah was it a fenced or unfenced yard that i don't know, I don't know. So, so here a couple of weeks ago when brandy and i went up to aaron's um aaron lives only 
maybe 15 miles from there. So, and that mm -hmm. was actually on my route. So I didn't even go out of my way, but I, I did drive down that highway. Oh, just to kind of check the scenario. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty wooded and, and it's, it's sparsely populated. I would say, you know, there's a house every so often, but it's not house on top of house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. It's, yeah, it, it, Missouri. yeah, you know, and I can understand. Okay, if if the dogs did attack the driver, okay, so there it is. I mean, we're talking about what was it, a mastiff? I think it was a, a mastiff and a German mastiff shepherd. And a German shepherd. And a German shepherd. Yeah. Okay, you're talking about two two large large dogs. Okay, so I could see this, and I could see possibly where he got overpowered, but I cannot see the damage. Because once right. they got him down and, and he stopped moving, you know, the dogs are well fed. They weren't starving. People were taking care of them. They would have basically, I don't know, lost interest. You know, they might have just paced around it for a while, but I, they wouldn't have eaten it. Yeah, if they, they were if they were just defending the house and were, were in defense mode, once the threat was eliminated, they're not going to continue mm -mm. any sort of they're, defensive. Yeah. Because, it, I mean, what DA said, that this body was just basically mutilated. 40% of the tissue gone, like 4 zero. That was the one in Tennessee, I believe. That was the one in Tennessee. Tennessee yeah. Doc, okay. I'll send you the autopsy report. So okay. let you look down. Yeah, but there, but there, was a lot of, there was a lot of tissue going on this one, too, so it was mangled up pretty bad. Yeah. Sure. But, you know, well, the Ray County coroner said it was the worst, worst condition he'd ever seen a body in. Yeah. And we have that information from a very reliable source. Okay. So, I mean, it, you know, it is strange. It is strange. And then with the sightings and then uh, we did uh, capture some things on, you know, on in pictures that, you know, you, you look at them all day and it, it just puts a lot of questions in your mind. Like, well, how many of them are there, you know, are, you know, it's, it's kind of like you, you get scared because I've, I've been out there several times with Krista and never had any feeling whatsoever, nothing. And then that night we went down to the, to the bonfire that they were talking about when we were all there. And then all of a sudden I started getting shivers and it wasn't because I was cold. It was just because I was getting a super weird feeling out there. Like, you know, maybe I shouldn't be out here kind of feeling. Yeah, you so, were talking to my wife about that. It all just kind of, yeah. yeah. And then it was, yeah, because I, I did. I was telling Annette about it. And, uh, you know, just a couple weeks later, then all of a sudden, you know, this Amazon driver was killed. Yeah. Not, you know, what, 18 miles from there. Yeah. It's it. That, it's just. So, it's put, so it, it I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I hate to jump to conclusions, but it's just a lot of weird stuff, you know, with this whole ordeal with the Amazon driver for sure. And they still yeah. haven't, you know, a lot of times when someone passes away on something like that, you know, they'll usually say, oh, they were survived by children or, you know, I haven't heard anything about this Amazon driver, age, merit, nothing. It, it know, just nothing. disappeared out of the news. As, exactly. You know, once, Gone. Once, once they said not that even, the, the, the dogs not even, killed, it just kind uh, of vanished. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, not even a funeral. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Haven't got anything yet. Yeah. I know and if there was, they that. kept it so quiet that nobody knows. Mm -hmm. mm. I know we blunder off on the cop terminology a lot, but totality of the, cir of the circumstances, one of these events by themselves is pretty pretty sketchy. Mm -hmm. You start adding two or three that we've got together, you know, and you start looking at the totality of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, well, you, then like... Then you throw in on top of that, Robbie, you want to throw in some totality in the circumstance. You throw in on top of that, all of the dog man sightings up and down the Missouri river. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's and, more than, there's more than a dozen documented sightings from around Hannibal alone. Yeah, and that's, well, it, you know, and yeah, you and just jump uh, conclusions when you start looking at all that stuff and looking at all yeah. that evidence. Well, the, well, the ranch actually, the property to the ranch touches the Missouri river. I mean, it's mm -hmm. part of it. But you can see the river; it's on a bluff, and so if you're on the side part of the of the event center this time of the year, you can see you can see the river plain as day. So it's it's all right there. 
Derek Buckle says, uh, taking one circle back, how do you guys collect all these stories? Is there an aggregate site? Uh, no, we just pay attention to current events. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, all you've got to look up is, is Google is Google Mysterious Death Missouri, and you will get and you, you can do that with about any state, but Missouri seems to have its own really weird yeah. share of them. Yeah, yeah. And, we're, love, and like Robbie said, when you have one happening, you know, and then two, okay, coincidental, but then when you have multiple happening, that's when that's when you gotta start saying, hey, you know, you know, law enforcement, we call this a clue. <laughs> I, you know, for the, for the Hunter story, I just watched my local news. Yeah, it, it happened in my. There it is. It's like, whoa, wait right. a minute. Let, let's talk about that for a second. Well, and then, yeah, and then, I got, I got sent an, Actually, I got sent the article. I believe it was Steve Payton in the in the uh, Padden in the uh, in the audience tonight sent me the article for the first time. He's like, I think you you, you might want to look at this. I'm like, holy crap! Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think I sent the next article from my local my local news, um, but you know when I was out in the field today and and checking around and looking at stuff, yeah, we have our big rivers and, and lakes and things like that, and everything is is the water's low if if, if you didn't notice, um, but in these smaller creeks and, and things running through these dense you know forest areas, they're drying up. And I think that's putting a lot of animals, cryptids, and everything else on a move to find a, a new freshwater source. And I was amazed today. I, I took several pictures. I'll have to show them to you all later. But th the water is super low. So, you know, I, I don't know if that has more to do with it or why we're seeing more of this weird stuff happening here in Missouri. Because they're losing, they're having to move, yeah. you know, and, and finding places that are not inhabited um is is becoming harder and harder for them so maybe that's yeah. why everything's starting to just pop up especially yeah, in, maybe, in maybe uninhabited that. areas with good water sources yeah, yeah targets of opportunity mm -hmm. you know well, you know last last night after we did our show uh brandy and myself and and terry and megan we were just kind of backstage talking and and megan asked if cryptids migrate i'm like i don't know you know, we've talked about that on this this mm -hmm. show several times. I think they follow game, you know, follow, yeah. just like any, anything else. Well, the, yeah. if anything, if any studying wildlife has taught us anything. And as a hunter, you study not only the prey animals in your area, but you study the predators. Mm -hmm. uh, if one, if studying wildlife has taught, has taught us anything is we know large predators cannot stay in one small area because they'll they'll eat everything that can be right. eaten there and they'll starve. So everything from grizzly bears to coyotes to wolves to mountain lions have a range. They will, mm -hmm. they will, they will patrol this range, and they don't stay in any one area for more than a few days because they will overhunt it, and the prey items will move on. So in, if, if Bigfoot and dogmen are large predators like we suspect they are, they have got to have an incredible range. A, a mountain lion will will uh, will patrol. I think it's in the ballpark of a 200 mile range. So a predator up. even bigger has probably got a much larger range. Wow. Yeah. I, I you know, I, do you think that they travel in a circle, like a circle, like they just do mm -hmm. one, a loop and it takes them several days to make the entire loop till they come back around to it. Do you think that's what they're, they might be doing? I, I think so, uh, I, and I think their range might be in the hundreds of miles, as opposed to yeah, that, as opposed to you know just being a few hundred, uh, being uh, being a few dozen miles or fifty, sixty to a hundred miles. I think they they operate on a on a big loop, probably following the herds, uh, and or uh, having pre planned like um, uh, if I was if I was a nomadic hunter, if I was a creature that lived in the woods i would have pre-planned areas that i'd already had like base camps set up where we would move from base camp to base camp in certain areas and i think that's why certain areas like if you look at missouri you will see that a lot of the sightings occur in the fall august september but then you look to like ohio and most of their sightings are later in the year they're like october november i think that's part of the loop i think in East Texas, you'll find them earlier in the year uh, when game is plentiful in the big big thicket area. I think yeah. the re the reason why we're seeing certain months having more peak sightings in certain areas is because they're moving through those areas at those times. 
And I think once we compile a better database of all these sightings, and I'm not just talking Dogman or Bigfoot, if we compare cryptids across the board and look at where their peak sightings are in certain areas and associate that with their behaviors, I think we're going to start being able to predict where they're going to be at certain times. Yeah, you could you could track it over years and see if there's a any kind of like like a like you were saying, Brandy, about the about the uh, cert, like a almost like a circular pattern, you know, and right, Robbie was saying you could even track migratory patterns that way over time, you know, and, and I think too, with the water being down, anytime you eliminate water, water and or food, uh, they're going to, they're going to be on the move for it somewhere else. Yeah. I, you know, I, I would, I would think that because if, if the smaller animals are moving to find a better water source, they're going to follow it. They're That's just right. going to follow it. Absolutely. That's it. It's well, we know, we know Dogman and Bigfoot are, are, are considered far more intelligent than your average animal. Uh, and I think that's what they are. I think they're, they're, they're not human level intelligence, but I think they're extremely intelligent animals. Personal opinion. Uh, agree to disagree if you think they're, they're Nephilim or whatever you think they are, but I think they're intelligent animals. Look at the behavior of deer. When it comes close to deer season, you're going to start seeing a lot more deer in town. You're going to start seeing a lot more in the national parks. These things are smart enough to know when the hunters are going to be out there and they move. If you yeah, you're going to see a lot. And put out a food plot yeah. and the months leading up to deer season, you'll see freaking deer everywhere. But, the, you know, the week of deer season, they're gone. Hell, look at turkeys. Yeah. I see more turkeys around my house year round than I can shake a stick at, but as soon as it gets the day before turkey season, you don't see any turkeys ever. It's like they never existed. Right. Yeah. Sure. yeah I, I was coming home from errands uh, a couple weeks ago, and I counted them. 18 were dead. Deer were dead alongside of the road on the way home. And it was like a six and a half, seven hour drive for me. So, yeah, 18 I counted. Now, I've not seen a, a, a new one anywhere around me since I've been home. It, it, it doesn't make any sense, but I, I saw all of them dead. Like they were on the move. They're trying to get where they need to be because they, it's like, they know, Hey, hunting season's coming up. We better find some place else to hide out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was just the deeper woods. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I, I just, I just find the whole story weird. The just, just the whole thing is just, they're not telling us enough. You know, you know what? I don't mean to, to bounce back like many, many years ago, but this was many, many years ago. This area that I live in now, there was a girl. Um, her name was Bianca Piper. She disappeared. She uh, wanted to walk home and it was evening and her uh, her mom let her. And, and it wasn't a very far walk. So it wasn't something like, you know, her mom let her do something that was awful. She did not. And I don't remember how the girl was off the top of my head, but... Um, that was kind of a weird circumstance too. Cause like sh the girl should have been home like five minutes after the mom, but not a trace of her. And that was 20, 25 years ago, if not longer, you know, there's a lot of, I think missing children out there too, that, mm -hmm. you know, honestly, who, who knows? I mean, this Bianca Piper where she lived is very rural out there. Not saying that it was a cryptid or anything like that. I'm not saying that, but it's just a, a lot of weird stuff, you know? But how many how many missing children have you heard about that, that disappear right yeah. from their front or backyard? Right. Just, yeah. I mean, they're just yeah. gone. Right. Well, in some of the missing 411 cases, uh, the kid literally went around a bend in the trail. The parents round the trail 30 seconds later, kid's gone. No just sign. Gone. You'll never find him Where again. did he go? You know, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just odd. How, how do you lose a kid, <laughs> you know, just right up? You know, you think that, but... Who knows? Yeah, that are just walking maybe 30 feet in front of you. How, how right. do you lose them when they just go uh, around a bend? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, not it's just that the parents are at fault or anything because, you know, honestly, I take walks with my kids all the time and they're up ahead of me and, you know. Right. But we did we did touch on and we did talk about how the, the cryptids may be moving in the state of Missouri. Let's yeah. talk about the, the caves and, and caverns and things, um, that tunnel systems that we got going. I mean, mm -hmm. th that could be a good possible way of, of how they're moving about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's uh, 
you know, Missouri is known as the cave state. You know, I know that there's caves in a lot of states, but I mean, we have we have a bunch of them here. And and um, I know down off uh, like Highway 44 area, um, you know, there's there's two within 20 miles and that's Merrimack Cave and, and then Onondaga Cave. And both of those caves, too, are also known to be haunted. Oh, so see, I didn't know that. Yeah, both of them. <laughs> we may need to check yeah. that out. <laughs> yeah. Well, the one, the Merrimack Cave, um, that was uh, supposedly Jesse James, who was a mm -hmm. hideout place for him. Yeah, so I've been through that cave several cool. times. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. And, I, DA, what did you think about it when you went through? You know, like I said, you know, I've, I've described myself as a psychic brick. I don't pick up on stuff like that. Uh, so when I went through the cave, it just seemed like a neat cave. I used to cave crawl as a kid, uh, when I was, a, when I was a much slimmer, smaller version of myself in my youth, I was a part of a cave crawling club here in Southwest Missouri. And we would go, you know, miles back in some of these caves. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. But again, I was a much thinner boy back then. And so going into caves has never really freaked me out or bothered me. So I, I didn't really feel anything. And, you know, at the time, I didn't think to ask Annette what she picked up in there. Uh, but it, it, it's a it's a pretty, pretty neat cave. I always, always enjoyed going about, through it. Which one are you talking about? Merrimack or Onondaga? Merrimack, yeah. Yeah. Onondaga is a really cool one, too. And that's actually like a mile from my daughter. And that's over in Leesburg. We went through that right. one when I was in high school. There was a group yeah. of us went up there. Yeah. Uh, but it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. They do ghost hunts out of there, too. Speaking of caves, um, I worked for a couple seasons as a overnight security officer, armed. I was a deputy at the time. I was moonlighting, working down at Silver Dollar City. Uh, I know any of you guys have ever been through Silver Dollar City. You've gone down mm -hmm. in, in, I believe it's called Marvel Cave. Yeah. Uh, you guys take the tour and go all the way through the cave and ride out on the tram. Uh, but we were expressly forbidden from going in the cave, no matter what we heard, after dark. Once the park was shut down, we, we armed security was not allowed to go into the cave. Okay, that's scary. That's just that's just odd. That's your job. I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know why. And you hear weird. I mean, what if what if it's people other. down there? Yeah. yeah. What if it's people down there? I oh well. Uh, is that yeah. what you say? Oh well, they're down there. I'm not going. They Read made the book, some reference to air quality. They made some reference to air quality that, that that the air quality got bad at night, but I didn't buy that because the air quality would be bad during the day too. There were no moving ventilation fans blowing air right. through that cave, so right. if the air is fine during the day, the air is going to be fine at night. And I can remember Correct. going by the entrance to that cave and like hearing stuff down there. And and I started down there one time, and my supervisor's like, "No, no, we're not allowed to go down there." I'm like, "What do you mean we're not allowed to go down there?" He's like, "We we have, have express orders to not enter the cave after dark." I'm so like, which which is weird. Why? I wonder why they allow people during the day. I went in that cave. I've toured. I've been in it. I've been in it a million times. Yeah. Um, and so I wonder, uh, another weird thing about that park is is it's really neat to be in there when there's nobody there, especially when all the Christmas lights are lit up. It's really beautiful. Uh, but when the Christmas lights weren't lit up, uh, you'd be walking around through that park at night, especially on foggy nights. And I've heard something pacing me in the fog oh, on wow. more than one occasion walking through that park. And and one night, me and another one of the officers who wasn't armed, we had, had a security, uh, we had security officers, and we had had off-duty actual officers. Uh, and I was one. I was an off-duty armed deputy that wore and I worked down there. And I had one of the unarmed kids with me. He was 22, 23, and we chased a, a dark figure around the park in a gator for like two hours one night. Wow! And it wasn't little. It wasn't like we were seeing the shadow of a person go between two people, uh, two buildings. We saw something that looked like it was eight to nine feet tall, ducking between buildings, and we chased it all over the park. No, so you were probably chasing a cryptid. <laughs> that's what well, like that's what doing. that's in fact that's what gave me the idea for the opening scene of uh, Lakeview Man Two, <laughs> when when the guy gets killed in the park. That's what gave me the idea for it. <laughs> I said, read the book, and you'll know why. <laughs> you'll know what happened yeah oh my at goodness least, I, just, I don't know I think I would have posed the question about I, I would have said well why wouldn't we go down there because it's not the air quality we all know it's not the air quality I mean right. because just because the air quality is not good doesn't mean it's going to make noise 
<laughs> you right. know, air quality is not going to make noise. Yeah, but You'll never okay hear it. In the daytime, <laughs> just not the nighttime because of the air quality. I don't get that. If it's bad in the nighttime, it should be bad in the daytime or, you know. Bad in the daytime, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Crazy people. <laughs> there you go, making sense. <laughs> yeah, keep yeah. doing that. No. Yeah. Freaking <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. A logical theory? No. <laughs> no way. Linda Bergman says, uh, at Jake, keep head on a swivel in the Mark Twain forest areas. People on Mike Morales' live stream said a few months ago some dangerous people living in that area. Yeah, I can tell you that firsthand. I've been down in the Mark Twain, and there, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not the animals that worry me. That's why I go armed. If I'm in the Mark Twain, I'm 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 well armed, and it's not mm -hmm. because I'm worried about bears. Right. It's the greater North right. American meth head that worries me. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I've been down in that area. Yeah, I, 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 well, I was in the Mark Twain today, actually. Um, but I had park rangers very close by, so I was okay. Um, they were kind of wondering what I was doing out there, but uh, well. I <laughs> they didn't ask, so I didn't tell them. Mark Twain <laughs> and warned me about, her, about certain areas. Right. I was out there. Um, it was one of my last stops today. It was out there. Uh, Markham Springs is is uh, where I was at when I was in the Mark Twain. So which is a beautiful area, um, but it's kind of sketchy, too. You know, I, I'm sure a lot of things go on out there. So I have there's moonshiners and meth heads. Well, if it was moonshiners, I would have been happy to see them. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, hey, I'll buy some off you. <laughs> well, we used to refer to that as card table whiskey. A couple good drinks and your legs would just fold right up under you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't need any of that. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, DA, just quick question to you, you know, talking Missouri cryptids, this is your area. Do, what, what can you tell us, like, what county that you've taken reports of the most, either Bigfoot or Dogman? In the state and kind of the uh, the one that has been seemed to be the most active of people I've talked to uh, is down near Eminence, Missouri, in Shannon County. Mm -hmm. I could see that. I could see that. It, initially, it was Bigfoot sightings, and now there are more Dogman sightings coming mm -hmm. out of that area. Yeah, I've rode horses down there, and I'll tell you what: there's some places that go off that there's nobody. You know, I could. I could there totally uh, was a, one of the better. Uh, uh, Bigfoot stories I, I've taken uh, was from a pair of horseback riders. Uh, mm -hmm. They were down in, um, trying to think of the name of the park, War Eagle, War Eagle National Park in northern uh, northern Arkansas, down by uh, uh, Eureka Springs. And they got chased out of the park on horseback by something screaming at them and throwing, throwing rocks. Wow, that's crazy. It scared the hell out of the horses. Yeah, I bet. I bet. That's crazy. I'm trying to see how far that is from me. What is? Eminence. <laughs> David Bice says, DA, not if you stumble on the still. Well, if I stumble on the still, I'm not going to be easy. To, I'm not going to be difficult to find because I'll be the guy passed out next to the still. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Eminence from me is 59 miles. That's not far. It's not that far <laughs> for me really either. I mean, it's not no. terrible. Right. So then again, when we were talking about Carter County, that's 40 miles from me. So, yeah, I, so that's I, yeah. right in that area. And I'm yeah. telling you, you talk about a hunter going missing in the woods. That's a, that's an area to do it. Uh, yes. Em, Eminence is the county seat of Shannon County. And Eminence is a poke and plumb town. I mean, you poke your head out the window, you're plumb through that town. Yep. And it, it is not a big town. And that's the county seat. All it is right. is, is, uh, is a little... Is a tourist area where people there's big horse place there. You ride cross country trail rides down there, and, and um, one supermarket that evidence. smells like rotten meat from the parking lot. Yeah, yeah, yep. Alley Springs, there's a spring down there. Alley Springs. We used to camp right down now. there, mm -hmm. uh, down by Eminence. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, I would uh, I would like to go back down there and do an extended stay with a couple of RVs where we could really get or mm -hmm. we could really get into the woods down there because I know yeah. some spots now that I would really like to go out and, 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 and check out. Um, there was one story. Uh, it's actually, I used that park and I can't remember the name of the campground. Uh, not off the top of my head. I'd have to look, but I used it in my, 
uh, was it the second or third apex predator, Robbie? Third was the third apex predator. Is right? Why I set it down in the eminence area. There was yeah. an old boy that was fly fishing down. Well, not fly fishing. He was he was bass fishing down there in the river right there. I think mm-hmm. it was the current river. And he stayed out in the water until it just got a little darker than he'd realized because he he was catching good fish. And uh, he said as he was going back to his truck, something charged him, and he ran and dropped the fish and looked back, and it was running off with the stringer of fish. And he just kept going to the truck and got the hell out of there. Didn't even stop for his fishing pole. Wow. He said it was it was large and black, and we, we came, he said it ran like a gorilla on all fours, only it was huge. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd have dropped the fish too. I said, oh, here, have some I think dinner. That's what it wanted in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have some dinner. Leave me off the menu, please. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you're a Piscatarian. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I just, there's all. You know, all over Missouri, there's something, something weird, you know, going on, be it cryptid or paranormal. There's, there's something. Oh, uh, yeah. Missouri, the, the paranormal in Missouri is just, I don't even know what to say about it. It's, you, it's just everywhere. Have you ever, uh, ever heard of the Dybbuk box? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it, it um, uh, a guy named Jason Haxton, he bought it off of eBay. Um, eBay. It, yeah, eBay <laughs> and uh, brought it home, and um, bad things started happening to to his family and stuff. So he ended up uh, burying it on some of his property, and then um, Zach Bagans got word of it, and he offered him an undisclosed amount of money, and he sold it to uh, Zach Bagans, and it's now in his museum. But the previous owner, before Jason had it, um, bought it for his mother as a gift and she ended up like having a stroke or something. I, I know he blamed the box for killing his mom. So, so that, that's, that's kind of a little bit of odd Missouri, you know, that the Dybbuk box was weirdness. Was yeah. Kept up in Louisville, Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if anybody's familiar with ghost adventures, yeah. Zach Bagans is, is, you know, he's the man in, in ghost adventures, but he now owns this, this box and it's in Las Vegas right. now in his museum. And where was that? Where, where is he at now? Uh, Who? What city was he located here in Missouri? Um, it's Kirksville. Kirksville. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's in Northern Missouri. Mm-hmm. So that mm. haunted box was here in Missouri. Yeah. And the dude got it to uh-huh. his, his mom for a birthday gift. The, the guy before him. And then the guy sold it on eBay and even said that it was, haunted. it was a haunted object <laughs> and Jason bought it and, and uh, brought it home. You know, he was not a believer in the paranormal. And, and actually we're, we've got him scheduled on our show for January. So be more about the Dybbuk box, but, but, but he, uh, just Here's your haunted box, mom, happy birthday. <laughs> Well, yeah, the first guy didn't know. He did not know it was haunted, and, and it, they it's didn't a tell him. box. It really. Oh, is. they didn't tell him. Oh, I thought the description said it was haunted. So it was. <laughs> when I did too, Doc. I was like, Jason "Why did you do that?" Gave it to his mother. The first guy gave it to his mother, not knowing. The okay. second guy who bought it off of eBay, eBay knew that it said haunted, but he was not a believer. Yeah. So he just thought, ah, it's a pretty box. I'll buy it. I, you know, it's not haunted. You know, and it made, it made him off in that description on eBay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's <laughs> some your box. Box. Don't mind the blood cancer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Demon possessed box, free to good home. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't believe but, how uh, many people would, would snatch that up, though. Nope. Yeah, but we're gonna have we're gonna have them on the show, and I, I believe me, I have my own questions. Like, you didn't have any idea. That this was real. Nope. Derek Russell had a question. He said, Has there been any UFO sightings or strange light sightings down near Eminence, Missouri? Yes, know. absolutely. I, and I can't tell you where, but I've been reading them. There's a whole bunch of websites that um, actually Terry Mosby's been bringing up, and she's bring, bringing them up so, so many. Um, so I don't know exactly, but I'm going to tell you what else about UFOs. Outside of Cape Girardeau, there is 
an undisclosed location where there was supposed to be like another Area 51, where There's there has been a UFO school. crash mm -hmm. outside of Cape. Um, I don't know where it is. You know, but there, there's all kinds of, of chatter and um, articles and everything about this actually happening in Missouri. Yeah. So, and that's just an hour and a half. That's about well, 70 miles north of me. Yeah. Well, DA just put up the comment. There's a lot of weird lights around Whitman Air Force Base. I've heard that too. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, absolutely. And probably around Richard Gebauer too, although that's a closed yeah. base. Yeah. True. I just think we're going to wait till May to get up there and get in the woods and look for this stuff. Yeah, but I just couldn't believe that they're talking about there's another area 51, 51, and it's an hour and a half north of me. I'm like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? What do you mean? <laughs> and, uh, you know, like I said, there's a lot of articles on it. They just had uh, a couple months ago, they just had a big convention there, a UFO convention in, in Cape Girardeau. So it's mm. a big thing here. Well, the the um, MUFON's Midwest Convention is in um, Eureka Springs, Arkansas, I believe in May, I think it is. The, the uh, I can't remember what it's called, Ozark Mountain UFO Conference. Uh, and, and yeah, that's not far from me it. either. Yeah, and that's got yeah. the dates for that. We're planning on vending at it. Cool. That sounds like fun. You know, I, I would love to go to that one too. May have to just... Uh, drive on down and check you out for the day. It's not too bad. Heck yeah. Uh, Steve Payton says, uh, Steve Payton says, uh, DAX Machina podcast, they turned Richard Gebauer into a Marine Reserve base. Yeah. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Uh, yeah. Steve, you mentioned a Boy Scout recreation area earlier. Uh, could you message me that? Maybe you and I could meet and go up there. If it's a, if there's a lot of weird crap going on at that Boy Scout place, I want to go. Where is it located? Is it on your side of the state? On your side uh, of the state or mine? Steve's uh, a cop up near Kansas City. Okay, so it'd be on your side. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So if he if he can give me uh, <laughs> give me some directions to that Boy Scout area, maybe we can plan an outing because I would definitely like to go up and film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because really, uh, honestly, in this little podcast here, we've got Missouri covered corner to corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody can get there quick, you know what I mean? So, and, and you know, here's the thing too that I find interesting. You know, we've just talked about Missouri. How every other state out there, I'm sure, has just as much weirdness. Oh yeah, know? it's just it's it's crazy. You know, this just one state we talked about, but every other, you know, you, you get. I guarantee you, there's some missing people and some other hunter deaths, and you know, they're that are odd. It, so, you know, I mean, I think about it, you could do a whole podcast on each state. I mean, you could just keep yeah. going through and, and go through each state and there's just so much going on. I mean, there's other states that you don't hear as much about because maybe the stories haven't hit national news or whatever. I mean, let's take, uh, Kansas or, or anything like that, where the stories have hit the mainstream media, or things like that. Mm -hmm. They're not as they're not as big, but they're still mm -hmm. they're still happening. They're still there. They're still weird. I mean, there's a lot of places we go. You can look up any state and find something paranormal for real. Anything, yeah. anything that you want to find, you can find it in any state. Yeah, Steve was yeah. saying that 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 Boy Scout Recreation Area is near Osceola, Missouri. I've okay. been through there many times. Ah, the cheese factory. <laughs> oh yeah, we Just, we exactly. still love to stop and get the cheese. Um. <laughs> Been there. You were mentioning weird stuff happening in other states. I, yeah. uh, someone just sent me this article the other day, and I've got to see if I can find it. I think I remember who it was that sent it to me, but I'd have to go look. Um, there was a sheriff in North Carolina that went on the record with the media saying this body, this person was killed by a large upright canine, and I don't know what it is. Wow. Let me see wow. if I can find that. Find the. Uh, yeah, the, the article, and I will just share it straight over. So give you me a second. my attention, since that's yeah. Did he not backpedal later and say no? I'm no. sorry, it was you know it's just <laughs> no, a regular dog. Not. Give me just a second, I will find that's that article. In my backyard. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just like that police officer um, that we had uh, who he uh, is uh, in Kansas City. Anyway, um, he spoke at our Fallen Supernatural, not this year, but last year. And he saw Bigfoot and he told us the whole story. Um, he said that the he took a, a, a lie detector for the police department just to show them that he's not lying. Yeah, I want to talk to him. I was incorrect about the state. It's not North Carolina. It's Ohio. Ohio Shefford, huh? Shefford, Sheriff goes on record, non-human creature slaughters horse found dead in creek. Wow. You know, that's, so that's The sheriff in honestly. southern Ohio is reporting that a non-human creature slaughtered a horse overnight. It happened on a farm on Airport Road in Ross County. Uh, the farmer stated he found his barn torn apart and was missing a horse. He stated there was blood in the barn and the back door was busted open. He found the horse in the creek in the back of the property. A deputy wrote in the report. He, he has cameras and stated he checked it already and no one had been there since yesterday. Upon further inspection, we were able to determine that a human did not do this to the horse. The horse, after being attacked, somehow ended up in the nearby creek where it died. Wow. Oh. And you know what? I got to say, that's pretty brave of uh, that deputy to come out and say that. Because, I mean, like, as as you guys know, you know, that's that's his yeah. career, you right. know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, okay, so we're, 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 we're talking weird. Let's talk weird in Missouri. Let's talk Marley Woods. Let's just talk Marley Woods. That's about oh, yeah. the weirdest thing that I know of in the state of Missouri. Let's do it. <laughs> um, Marley Woods is an undisclosed location in the state of Missouri um, that is being documented. Now there's a, what was his name? Ben, Ben Hansen. Krista, was it Ben Hansen that was there at one time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Ben Hansen was there. Okay. And um, now this is kind of like Skinwalker Ranch. Now, if you know of Skinwalker Ranch, it has everything. It has cryptids. It has paranormal. It has UFO. It has anything that you can imagine on this and there was a story that um we were told about this horse that spontaneously combusted in a barn on this property what, what? Yep. yes yes he spontaneously combusted yeah in and on outside. this property and, and yeah the, and the owner was outside and did not hear it, just went in and his horse is blown up. Yep. True story. Damn, my yeah. horse on fire over there. What the hell's that all about? <laughs> just, yeah. just, well, if one minute he's okay, and next minute he's on fire. I don't know. Now, and I don't, I don't honestly understand com completely how that happens even you know because i mean you hear stories all the time of uh well not all the time but you hear stories of people spontaneously combusting you know burning from the inside out i don't know how that happens it, it's, it's just amazing how 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 can they're that happen it goes awry <laughs> right that's that's the theory is that they're, they're the mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell just starts creating so much energy heat uh combustion yeah I, I mean i don't know i mean i know horses can bust some big old air biscuits i mean maybe it had too much <laughs> methane, in there or something. methane methane gas maybe i don't know if their body gets too hot they have to you know you I, I, I don't know on up though but if he didn't hear anything just went inside and you know well uh, uh, sugar britches is sitting there you know in an ash pile and it didn't it didn't even affect his barn or the stall or nothing it was in a stall it was it was like there was horse remnants all over from what oh so it blowed up real good yep. literally it blew, blew up, up. like good. he was in there with the horse went outside and was doing something and came back and the horse was literally blown up like exploded yep. no bombs That's went off went no nothing he exploded yep. up Yep. <laughs> that's all I can say. That's all I can say. I mean, that's just a... So, but, but out there at Marley Woods, though, they have, you know, UFO activity. They see strange orbs. They have cryptids out there and ghosts. Go figure. Well, maybe it was aliens with a... I mean, and I'm not being facetious here. Maybe it was, maybe it was some sort of, you know, it, this is Missouri, yeah? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. It, was, maybe it was some sort of experimentation 
you know, extraterrestrial thing using some sort of blowy uppy death horse ray thing or something. I don't know. I mean, it's the horse ray. I don't. I, I don't know. Well, I, I will was, tell you, the guy that um, that's been investigating that place for many years, Thomas Ferrario. Um, we had him on our show and I, I've been seeing on his Facebook, he's, there's a, been some filming going on down there. And there's, I think from the way I understand it, they're doing something like similar to like a skinwalker ranch type show mm-hmm. down there. So maybe we can look forward to seeing some of this on TV. Um, yeah. th- th- this is, this is how much it's being documented. Um, yeah. He was also telling us the story that he saw uh, it was kind of like a sloth-like creature, and it was probably about 12 to 15 mm-hmm. feet tall, weighed a couple tons, but it got up and walked on its yeah. hind legs. Just It just walked, and it walked right through a fence like it wasn't even there. Yeah. And he, and he saw this. And then they've also seen a... Um, uh, a white type cryptid. Mm-hmm. He said that's been seen out there too. So, a lot of weird and strangeness going on at that place. But see, here's the thing that they gotta um, they're invest. They don't put it out there just because people think um, you know people people live there. It's 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 property owners, so they don't want everybody going by and gawking. Right. And I get mm-hmm. that. I get that. And um. So actually, Brandy and I are going to have lunch with Thomas and, um, you know, talk to him a little bit more because it, it really intrigues me, the whole place, because everything I'm interested happens there. So but I will this, tell you- this is just like like what you said, Brandy. This is just like Skinwalker Ranch where just everything mm-hmm. that you could possibly well, imagine the, we, yeah. on the weird side yeah. just happens. Yes. Yeah, right. No, so, weird, but I, I, you know, weird. I do, I do have my theories on, on some of the stuff that is happening now. Um, he's talking about this sloth like creature. I don't know of any that has ever been document documented that looks like a sloth. I have in that big. I think. Well, you talk now, about cryptid. Chris, I, I told you, I, I told you my cryptid. theory. Cryptid. I th- I right, well, like a if we're if we're talking real animals, I mean, there was a, a giant sloth at one time. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what it was actually called, like Megatherium or something like that. Yes, yeah. it was a Megatherium, but it also died out about eleven thousand years ago. Yeah, and the the Megatherium was located down in, in South America. Uh, so, but the the what is it, the Aerotherium? was located up in this area especially up in your area too robbie um that that's where this this general animal would live now they say that it wasn't as big as the megatherium but mm-hmm. it only weighed about two to three tons instead of three to four tons oh, right that's it <laughs> you know oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it just wasn't that's as big tons. but it was up in this area so I'm thinking that this could possibly be a manifestation that he saw because he said it walked through a fence like nothing. Well, if it's caught in a time loop or it's a residual entity, just you know, reliving its life over and over again without even realizing it, um, that fence wasn't there when it was alive. Mm-hmm. So of yeah. course it's gonna walk through that fence because it wasn't there. Right. So I mean, yeah. I, I have theories on it, I, but that's why I gotta talk more. I, there's just there's just so many questions on this place. I that's why I'm hoping that they do the, the a series or something on it because I I want to know. I I really want to know. This is really cool for me. I'm like okay because I'm a geek. Really cool. <laughs> Y'all got all kinds of crazy stuff happening in Missouri, man. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, know. It's like it's, it's just never ending. Showing themselves, right? I mean, it's called the Show Me State for nothing. So there you go. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. True yep. Story. It's like go ahead and show me because I wish we didn't have to wait till May to get out there, Doc. I'm I'm ready to get down there and get in the woods. I know, man. Yeah. 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 Right now, um, well, today they were looking a little creepy, and I was right there in the middle of the day, and I was like, Ooh, this I don't want to be out here by myself. And of, of course, you know, um, I'm not going too far. You know, I'm not going too far around because I have my daughter with me, and I'm like, hmm. It, it could be out a little bit. I'm like, hey, there's something going on. And, yeah. it, you know, as I was going in about seven miles from this one certain town, 
you know, I started feeling nausea. Um, the, the hair on the back of my neck was just, you could feel it tingling, you know, and we were both getting a little bit of a slight headache. And as we were going through them, my daughter started complaining like her chest was heavy, like it was, it was getting very hard for her to breathe. Now, down in this area where I'm at exactly is, is reclaimed swamp land back down here. It's, it's all farm now. So everything is flat. But as you get up in that area, it gets a little hilly. But as for elevation, it's, it's really nothing. So I, I don't know what that would have been exactly. So that was kind of strange. That was kind of strange. It's just weird out there. You know, I mean, you're, you're, we're talking about all of these cryptids being in the eminence area, you know. That's only 60 miles. Then then where this hunter went down, well, that's only 40 miles. And then, you know, and then these other places that kind of freaked me out a little bit. Well, that's 20 to 40 miles. And I think y'all need to come down here and check that out a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And we'll, we can go check out a haunted house and stay at it for a weekend. Heck yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> haunted cabin. <laughs> yeah. Um, I put the link on, on our, our chat there so you can go take a look at it. It's a pretty big house and it has an old mill and everything else on it. And it's right across from Markham Springs, which is the Mark Twain National Forest. And there's a lot of weird shit. I mean, how close point. do you want to be? Yeah, it's like how close you want to be. We can sit right in, in it if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Doc's here, so I'm not going to take his sayings from him. But Doc. We're down I'm like down with the fat kid on a seesaw. <laughs> so can I use the other one since you use that one? Absolutely, brother. That ain't I'm down like four flat tires. <laughs> down like four flat tires. Yeah. I'm down like a rodeo clown. Linda Bergman says it'd be great to have a camping meetup in the Ozarks this spring. We oh, should do that. yes. We should do, we should do like a, a, a paranormal slash cryptid bonfire well, see if we can get a campground that's on board for letting us to take over for a weekend. Have everybody come in. You know, we can we can talk cryptids and 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 horror stories and books and you Let's know paranormal events. I think that'd be yes. awesome. Let's yes. do it, game. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Start planning be, that. My belt. Fit. That would be fine. That would be fine. Yeah. Camping yeah. with cryptids. Yeah. Make sure you, make sure you bring Lucille. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it will be with Stella. Stella, Stella will be with Stella, 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 Stella. Yeah. Stella. You bring yeah. Stella, I'll bring the Punisher. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, yeah something. Steve says at UDA that uh, Bush Wildlife is real close to where he's at. And that's pretty close to where I'm at as well. So nice. and there's a lot of crazy weird things going on out there too. They used to be underground bunkers there for, I think it was like World War One or one of the world wars. And a lot of crazy stuff goes on out there. Which is which leads me to another thing. It's right next to what's called the Equidome, and a lot of uh, back in the '70s and '80s, um, teenagers used to go there and do a lot of devil worshiping. So <laughs> a lot of weird, crazy stuff there. So yeah. Where could possibly go wrong. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like a whole time. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Lenita says, have to go. Love y'all. Love the show. Well, Lenita, thank you for being here. We love you, too. Yeah, you have a good, good night. night. Bye, Lenita. Chairman Meow says, like the crazy tunnels in Springfield. Yes, there are some crazy tunnels here in town. I can take you to one of the big entrances. It's big enough you could drive a truck in it if you could get it down there. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I would not want to go in there without a group of armed individuals. Did you wow. mention those tunnels in Ragnarok series, DA? Yes, I did. Those are really there. Oh, okay. See, that, that chimes something in my memory. I thought I remembered that. Yeah, those are really down there. Mm -hmm. And supposedly there's a cave entrance that runs from the square all the way out to the north end of town uh, at one of at one of the parks. And they now have, they have Doling Park. And they now have the entrance to that cave, which you could go right up to it at Doling Park. But for years it was wide open. But now it's got big steel grating that's been you know chiseled into the rock and cemented in place. You can't get in it anymore, but used to you could get in it and uh, it w goes all the way to the center of town. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's strange. Yeah. I mean, y'all some crazy stuff in Missouri, man. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, Missouri's <laughs> nuts, man. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's just what we're talking about. Yeah. There's a lot of, I'm just, 
there's a lot of things that you know that I I I can't discuss um just because they're 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 like a private case or, or you know where people don't want me to mention their names or whatever but um yeah it's it's very strange and um Chris and I have found it anywhere from out in the middle of nowhere to um middle of a suburb it, you know it's just it's anywhere yeah. It's anywhere and that's what i'm saying i, I it's it's uh with the with the sightings with uh, of cryptids uh, being more prominent now i don't know if because more people are looking you know because before people just dismissed it you know oh well you know but more people are looking than they you know than they used to um I, I, I don't know. I, and I keep thinking about Brandon Cooper. Brandon Cooper would ca calls uh, Bigfoot hairy men. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I'm like, I keep thinking that in my head, and I don't know why. Say, the hairy man. You know, the hairy man. <laughs> but growing up in Michigan, um, they, the stories are there. They've always been there, you know, the dogmen and, and Bigfoot. So I, I, I grew up with all the stories. And as an idiot child... Well, you know, I didn't think about me and my friends going out in the woods playing around. You know, we didn't we didn't even, you know, we didn't think that there would be something out there more vicious, uh, you know, than like a, a a bear or something like that. We didn't think that, but um, now I know better. <laughs> so I believe all the stories that I heard. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, like you like you're saying, I grew up running around the woods. I mean, we'd be out till well after dark playing playing stupid games like freeze tag and hide and seek. And I remember going out in some pretty hairy hairy areas to hide from, you know, cousins and everybody else. And looking back at it, I'm like, man, how did none of us kids ever go missing? Because there's there's some crazy crap in the woods, and that's that's just animal wise. Not to mention the people. But uh, exactly you know, knowing the things I know now, I wish I'd have uh, mm -hmm. been going to a lot more places armed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised I survived. That's all I got to say. I'm surprised. Considering some of the dumb crap we did as kids, I'm surprised I'm surprised we survived anyway. Right. Even bison yeah. snipe hunting. Yep, done that. <laughs> Been there, done yep. that myself. You ever done cow tipping? Yep. <laughs> what do you tip one? Like twenty percent? <laughs> Fifteen, depending on the service. Depending on the service. Yeah, <laughs> but I've never been snap hunting, but I've taken people snap hunting. Right. I, I think every Ozarks kid at one time got taken snipe hunting, or at least the ones that spent time in the woods. Right. I was taken snipe hunting. I was the victim. Believed every word my cousins I, told me. I've been I've been the victim, and I've been the 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 prank puller. Uh, <laughs> Yep. Yeah. We uh, we actually yeah. uh we actually uh, uh came up with our own like play on that. We would take we a group of us would go out and we'd put someone up on the hill with a with a tow sack and tell them we're going to drive them their way and then a couple of us would circle way out around behind them and come up in the woods and make all kinds of racket and scare the <laughs> living shit out of them. Well, one <laughs> night a kid comes running down the hill with this tow sack saying something was after him. And we're all dying, laughing, waiting for the guys that were that we'd sent out to chase him. Uh, mm -hmm. This kid, he's like scared to death. Something's gonna get him. And we're like grabbing hold of him to calm him down. And after about an hour, the two guys that we'd sent out come walking down the hill. We're like, man, you guys scared the shit out of him. And like, what are you talking about? He wasn't there. Yeah. Like we we, didn't, we it wasn't us. Wow. And we don't know what scared the hell out of that kid, but he, he was convinced something, something was oh. something was right on his heels. Right. No. Crazy. Like we just got up there and he wasn't there. Wow. wow. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Do you do you think question, do you think uh, you know, when these people go out in the woods and I you know, you hear people having bad encounters, you hear with Bigfoot, you hear some of them having good encounters. Do you do you think it's uh like the Bigfoot or whatever, even dogmen, like if, if they know, if they can tell like a person's intention or, you know. I think that's, that, that's it to an extent. Um, well, Eric, for example, um, dogs, if you, if you come up on a dog that you have never encountered before and, you know, you 
you run from that dog, it's going to chase you. Uh, mm -hmm. Dogs can sense fear. Uh, right. If you're if you're scared to death of a dog, it's going to act more aggressive. Um, and I think that's to a large extent the same thing with cryptids. However, mm -hmm. I do also think they have personalities. You're going to meet good ones and bad ones. Uh, except dogmen. Dogmen are just assholes. I think pretty much everybody that's had an encounter mm -hmm. with a dogman, it's not been a good one. Good. Yeah. Yep. So I yeah, think it's very, very likely uh, to yeah, run into people, good and bad Sasquatch. They're going to yeah. go, they're gonna go uh, play fetch with you for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and we so you're saying that they're the most aggressive of, of, of cryptids, that they are the most aggressive? Uh, Dogmen and Gugway, as far as Gugway. I know. Right. Yeah. Gugway. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, you don't. You don't hear peaceful encounters uh, with and Gugway. The Gugway or like the big was, predator of Bigfoot. The one we talked about with Ryan the other night. Uh, what was that? Uh, one? Genosqua. Uh, yeah. Genosqua. The Genosqua are also known to be very, very aggressive. Now, and Would DA, you, haven't haven't there been some accounts of of, um, of Sasquatch actually helping out human beings? Uh, mm -hmm. there, there are some reports that have come in from loggers. Uh, like uh, I've heard violent encounters with the loggers, but I've also heard stories like a logger, you know, out out cutting by himself, tree falls on his leg, a bigfoot with a bigfoot supposedly lifted up the tree and got him out. Um, yeah, which is which is 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 definitely considered on the friendly behavior. Then you've got that little kid uh, that was in what North Carolina, Robbie. Yeah, that North disappeared Carolina. in the woods for three days and said a bear took care of him and fed him berries and then brought him home after three days. Wasn't a bear. Yeah, bear don't do that. No, one, that, was, uh, that was that was a winter. My time. second show, we did a good show on that. That was like a, a hour long show almost. That yeah, was that was a good one too, Robbie. Very but, interesting topic. Yeah, but the bear don't do that. It was the dead of winter. If the bear had found a meat source in January, February, it would have eaten said meat source. Yeah. Yeah. Bear don't bring berries to kids. That's not bear behavior. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, and it's, know, just, it's just like people, like DA said, I think there's there's <laughs> there's assholes and there's not, you know, and so yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, it, it, look no further than than dogs. I mean, the, like DA said, dogs have personalities too. There's dogs that are great dogs that, you know, are just sort of, and you get some dogs that are like assholes. It's like, yeah, I've heard a couple of dogs that were just assholes. I hate that dog. You know, I mean, yeah, and if, even I didn't like it. It was my dog. Yeah. yeah and if these, if these are sentient beings that have, have their own families, their own, uh, their own tribe, so to speak, things like that, then they may, they may have some customs and social mores uh, similar to to ours. You know, I mean, people have said, "Hey, they got their own language and such as that." So, what's to say they they don't have their own type of customs that they adhere to, and it may be helping somebody out in need, type of thing. I don't know. Forrest had a good question. He says, "Do these cryptids hold up and live uh, subterraneally?" With witnesses hearing these metal noises, could these dogmen or Bigfoot be coming through literal doors in the ground from underground? It's entirely possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that you know places like this, or like Missouri especially, are littered with caves. If you look at the overlay, and hell, I'll just bring it up. If you look at the difference in the overlay, the top being the missing 411 disappearance clusters, and the bottom map being the map of known cave systems throughout the United States, notice how those big clusters match up very closely with disappearances in caves. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I definitely think these things are using using caves yeah. either as dwellings or as a underground highway because in the, in the case of the mammoth cave system we just don't know how far it goes or how deep right same with missouri there's there's caves we just don't know how deep or how far they go because yeah. exploring cave systems is not like exploring a river system with a, let's say for example just out of the blue the five of us were going to explore the nile okay with nile's already been explored but let's say it's completely you know, brand new territory, and we're going to go in and explore it. Um, we would establish base a base camp, and we would probably establish airdrops for supplies. You can't do that in a cave system. You've got to pack literally everything in, establish a base camp, then make multiple trips to bring in supplies mm -hmm. so you can branch out from there. Uh, you've got to pack literally everything in. So to go more than a day or two into a cave is a major undertaking, yet 
some of these cave explorers, once they've got more than a day deep inside some of these cave systems, they're reporting finding bones. What wow. the hell takes bones that deep in a cave? Right. Well, like that, like that one girl, she was 26 year old geologist and they were on a cave exploration. I think it was up in, in the Appalachian cave system and they were in caves that no human being, according to them, had ever been to. And they were finding backpacks, clothing, hunting equipment, rifles, you know, stuff like that, human skeletons, bones, things like that. And, you know, this is this is deeper, uh, deeper than anybody had ever gone. And they, uh, according to her account, they they got chased by one and she managed to ferret her way out. And she was underground for, I believe, it was a week and, wow. and made her way out to a to a to a cave opening. So, I mean, and if you overlay the Bigfoot sightings on top of that, if you overlay any kind of Sasquatch sightings over that, over that map that they had, it would probably kind of coincide with, you know, sightings, missing 411 cave systems, you know, and it's all, all right there. Yeah. You, you concur with that, Robbie? Absolutely. So. Because, uh, and that, I can't remember, was it? Last Wednesday night that we that we actually talked when we was talking with Ryan when we actually brought that map up the first time it, it and matched those overlays up da yeah yeah we talked we talked about that I was like you know that is just amazing to think how much that lines up with with all those missing four one ones I mean it's not coincidental dude. It's that, no. it's that whole blue thing we were talking about earlier, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, you, you go where the evidence takes you. I mean, yeah. right. walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. That's right. That's a fact. And again, the, the preponderance of evidence. Um, you take dozens and dozens, sometimes even hundreds of eyewitness accounts from an area, a couple of that with missing people, and then you start finding, you know, like torn up campsites or you find bones in a cave. Things have got to add up. I mean, you know, at what point at what point is people just going to go, OK, there's something really, really, really wrong here and, mm -hmm. and start accepting that, they, you know, it could these cryptids could be responsible for it. Um, you know, you don't have to have the smoking gun to prove somebody was murdered. You you. You know, and like we said before, um, people have gone to prison for a long, long time on eyewitness testimony. Yet suddenly, when it comes to cryptids, eyewitness testimony doesn't mean a damn thing. Um, I don't want to be the guy that goes out and shoots one of these things and drags it in for proof. I wouldn't mind catching one on film. I, I think that would be neat. Uh, but I'm not going to shoot one unless I have to. Right. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I don't believe in, in, in just killing something to kill it. Everything I've ever hunted in my life, I hunted to put, to stock the freezer. Uh, it, it's, it, I don't, I just don't believe in hunting something for hunting's sake. Uh, you know, it's got as much right to live as we do, but that, that right to live ends when it starts infringing on my right to live. Uh, I can and will defend myself and I, everybody here should as well. Um, but you know, it's, it's just one of those cases where there is just so much, uh, just so much evidence. We've got hair samples. We've got scat samples. We've got people have found blood samples of cryptids. Uh, but it all gets suddenly discredited. You know, they start they start trying to make somebody. Any, you can tell when somebody's getting too close to this the, this information. They're getting too close to having the proof to present to the public when government the government starts going after that person doing everything they can to discredit them um you know I, I can tell you from law enforcement you don't discredit a witness unless you're trying to destroy their credibility to save your case uh defense attorneys do it all the time they will attack somebody's character and try to make them look like an idiot to destroy the case against them uh, when that person might still be 100 percent telling the truth you know it doesn't matter if you destroy their credibility on the witness stand, their testimony is just basically ignored by the jury. Yeah. And you are all out there. You guys out there are the jury. Yeah. You know, this is the, the trial of our, of our lifetimes. We have placed, as Robbie again again and I will put it, the preponderance of evidence is already on the table. Uh, if people don't believe at this point, it's because they choose not to. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... 
you can only it's my dad used to use this analogy to for me all the time. He said, if every time you walked around a corner, I punched you in the mouth, how many times would it take you to start looking before you went around that corner? I said about one time. <laughs> well, same thing. How much of this evidence do you do we have to to put in front of the these people before it's like, oh wow, this is real. I mean, right. you know, I, there's just too much stuff that that you know, like we talked about earlier. You know, one thing, eh, but when you start adding this stuff, that many people are not going to get together and have that much of a cohesive story over the length of time that these cryptids have been being reported. They're not. It's it's not going to happen. You know, right. somewhere, somewhat, how the line is going to break down and somebody's going to forget the story or somebody's going to say the wrong thing or it's just not going to be a, there's no way they can continue it as long as it's been continued. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a soapbox we've all been on at one point or another. Um, you know, um, I still want to keep going with this. I'm nowhere near exhausted on the, the weird Missouri, just weird Missouri alone. We barely touched the, the, uh, the paranormal portion. But oh, yeah. uh, how about we, uh, we take a, a quick break? Um, you know, everybody can, can hit the bathroom or grab, grab a refill of coffee. I know I could use a refill. Yep. And uh, in, we will, uh, we'll take a quick minute to talk about the, the show's sponsors. We have two of them. Uh, you guys, we can we can jump out in shifts. I'll I'll bore everybody to tears talking about the good folks over at Scallywag Tactical, and then I've got a, a very attractive Volvo, albeit pint-sized <laughs> pocket doc, who will go on to uh, describe our other show sponsor, which is the wonderful folks over at Dark Angel Medical. So let me go into my tirade about Scallywag Tactical, and then Doc will jump in and tag out with me while I uh, hit the bathroom and hit the coffee, and we'll uh, we'll get back to the show in about three minutes. So, folks, uh, I want to just uh, take a minute to talk about Scallywag Tactical. I've mentioned them in my books. I've mentioned them on the show. Just some of the most incredible blades I've ever used. I've probably got uh, maybe 15 of their blades, if you want to count the pocket knives, and I've yet to get a bad one. Um, one of my favorites, and I will show this off real quick, this thing is called the Dew Claw. Uh, it's very it's it's a fixed blade knife. It's got a Kydex sheath. It is about a quarter inch thick on the back of the blade. It is one thick knife. You can see it's got a thumb a thumb spot on it, where you can hold it and grip it like this. This knife is pretty well ideal for anything you've got to you've got to get through that's heavy. I've used this thing. You can't even see a mark on the blade where I've used it, but I've used this thing to like to like a Spray out the ends of wood to make make kindling. Um, I've used this thing for everything, and it holds an edge like unbelievably well. Um, they just make incredible blades. Uh, Scallywag Tactical is is something I featured in my books because they're such high quality blades. Um, granted, some of them are a little pricey, but right now you can get some of the pocket knives for as little as twelve bucks. Um, heck, the the one I carry is my everyday carry is just an incredibly sharp great little knife it's called the privateer um some amazing blades and you can uh, you can go over to dark angel medical i'm not sorry not dark angel medical but you can go over to scallywag tactical and uh if you use discount code da roberts 10 you and the link right there and if one of the mods would be so kind as to, the moderators would be so kind as to put the link up in the chat so you can just click on it that link right there will link directly to their site, and it's a part of the affiliate link from here, uh, from the show. So, again, you know, uh, one of the mods will throw that link up in the chat so you guys can just click on it. Uh, use discount code DARoberts10 at your checkout uh, for 10% off your entire order. And they've got some really badass hats and some pretty cool T-shirts. I've got a couple of their shirts. Um, some of their hats are pretty freaking cool. Uh, They've got really cool swag. I mean, they get some pretty neat stuff. Uh, but the blades are, are what keep me coming back from time and time again. Just some fantastic, high-quality stuff. And uh, I've never been disappointed with a single one of their blades. Uh, so, you know, and they're a veteran-owned company. Uh, Craig Burhart, the owner of the company, just an awesome dude. Retired Navy. 
uh, just a fantastic guy to talk to. Um, super nice. And anytime I've had any question about the blades uh, or something from the book, they're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. And they jump right in and, and have been well, very helpful. I, I sent them a crazy message one time. I'm like, hey, can you throw the, the bounty? And the bounty is one of their bigger, biggest blades. Uh, I'm like, can you throw it? And they're like, well, let's find out. And they sent me a couple of videos of them chucking one. And uh, I, I was like, hmm, that's pretty impressive. So I ended up doing it in the book. But I wanted to know that it would work. So, you know, make sure you guys go over and show some love to Scallywag Tactical. We are an official affiliate. Uh, um, some of the best blades I've ever, ever had, ever had the privilege to use. And I will continue to use these blades for many years to come because they are that high quality. Now, having said that, I am going to uh, co uh, consider myself under the condition of a code yellow emergency because I need to go to the bathroom. And I'm going to turn this little 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 uh, fiesta over to uh, the uh, the founder of the feast there, Mr. Doc. And uh, he can throw that code up when he needs to. And he's going to tell you guys a little bit about Dark Angel Medical. Doc, I'll let you take it from here. All right. Are we doing a commercial or you want me to talk? Just go ahead and talk. Or you can play the commercial. <laughs> no, um, so DA and I have known each other for uh, over a decade now. And uh, you've seen probably seen our kits and, and uh, even maybe myself and some of his books. Uh, but we we have a wide variety of trauma kits, any, anything from minor first aid to major first aid. Uh, trauma kits from single individuals to multiple individuals. And, and, and we always say it here on the show, you know, hope is a very poor strategy. And if you're going to be out in the woods, out on the road, even at home, uh, have a med kit anywhere that I have a fire extinguisher, I have one of these trauma kits uh, next to it. So if I, if we have a, a no crap life threat and emergency inside the house uh, that everyone in my house knows exactly where a trauma kit's supposed to be. And uh, if you want to learn how to get trained on this stuff, uh, it, it's not rocket surgery. David Bai was in, in my class uh, in Kansas uh, a few weeks back, and it was a, it was great to finally meet him in person, uh, mm -hmm. to talk to him in person. And he came to my class, and he, he was like, man, I got a lot out of it. And that's what we're trying to do is just build this awareness because a, pe a lot of folks will go out in the woods uh, looking for these things, and it may – you know, God forbid anything happened to you, you know, from one of them, but even just going out and traipsing around in the woods, you know, uh, at nighttime, limited visibility, you can get hurt uh, and you need to know how to take care of yourself or you need to know how, how to take care of the other folks around you more than anything. And if, uh, if you don't have a trauma kit, you don't have a med kit on you, then you're setting yourself up for failure. If you want to learn how to use one of our kits sign up for one of our classes we're working on our 2023 calendar right now and uh if you buy one of our kits you can use this two five that is the biggest discount we get that's a 25 percent off code on our trauma kits and if you ever happen to use one of our kits to see uh yourself or someone else all you have to do is email us and let us know the circumstances everything that happened what you used and send the unused portion back obviously because everything else that's just gross uh send the unused portion back to us we'll inspect it for serviceability uh we'll uh repack it and reseal it with all the components that you have used and uh send it back to you 100 percent free of charge it's called our kit for life guarantee and uh right now we stand on 157 replacement pieces and parts and kits that have gone out as a result of that. So uh, I'm, I'm very passionate about this and I want to make sure that everybody has the products they need to save themselves or somebody else. Cause I've used them. Uh, my friends have used them in uh, real life situations and they do work. So uh, we, if y'all have visited our site and we appreciate you, if you haven't head over to darkangelmedical.com and, uh, and check us out. We appreciate y'all. Also, real quick, too, Christmas is coming up. It'd make great Christmas gift, too. Yeah. Absolutely. As do uh, cryptid books by a certain chunky author from Missouri. <laughs> maybe, maybe this guy right over I wonder, here. Yeah, I was going to say, who's that? No, I wouldn't, uh, shameless plug. I don't know. <laughs> Horror is gift that keeps on giving. That's 
right. Nothing says hey, Merry Christmas quite like scaring the pants off somebody. That's right. right. All right. <laughs> um, appreciate everybody sticking around for uh, sticking around while we had to make that quick break. I uh, I drank so much coffee. I was uh, I was needing to make a pause for the cause. So gratefully, <laughs> Doc talked plenty long enough for me to take care of that. I was. I was <laughs> Thank you so much. I needed that break too. <laughs> Not a problem. And at you know, any point you, 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 you ladies need to bow out. I know, you know, you guys may want to go to bed before I'm done running, run, before I'm done yammering. But uh, I wanted to, wanted to touch on some of the more paranormal aspects of Missouri, mm -hmm. not just the cryptid aspects. And the first thing I wanted to talk about was something you both have experienced, the Joplin spook light. That was Brandy. That was not me. That was me. Yeah. Oh, that I thought was it was me. both of you down there. We, um, well, we, I didn't go that Friday night. I didn't go down until Saturday morning. So I did not get to experience the spook lights, but Brandy did. Yeah, I did. Tell everybody um, what that is and, and kind of a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the spook light is, is supposed to be a ball of light that appears in this one certain area on this, this certain road. And it, you know, it, it, it has appeared to many people through the, throughout the years. And, and, it used to not be populated down there, so you could just go out and just sit there and watch and, and, and wait for it to happen. Um, now you can't even get down that road, unfortunately. Um, David Glidden has done documentaries on it, which which are really good. You know, I recommend them to anybody you know wanting to know about the spook light. But he took us down this alternate road that runs parallel with that road. That it, it's an it's a, a country a country dirt road where you can go out there and there there's uh, kind of like fields uh, on both sides and then they're lined with with uh, woods and everything on the sides. And it was a little creepy out there because it's just dead silent out there. And uh, I did not get to see the spook light itself. They said that you can you can see something very similar to the spook light, if not the spook light, on this road. I did not see it, but what I did see was little sparks of red. It it almost reminded me of glitter, like it would they would just pop. There would be a few that would pop, and then they'd be gone. And then you you know you'd wait a little while, start talking again. Next thing you know, these little red lights would just start popping all over this road, and you're like, "What is going on?" <laughs> and I have no idea. There is no e explanation for this. They you know they keep si saying that it's uh, gas, and it's you know it, it isn't. It isn't. They've done all the testing out there. It it, it is none of these things. It's just a natural phenomenon that just happens out there, and. Um, they're trying to explain why. And I'll tell you what, I didn't believe it. I, I really, I really didn't believe this. I'm like, oh, Jesus, this is probably just a star or, or headlights bouncing off of something out there. Who knows? But, but when I saw the red glitter happening, I was like, wow, that, that was, that was really amazing. Um, David Glidden also had said that there was actually a blue light that he had saw and I can't remember if he said that it danced across the road or down the road, but it was a glowing blue light that went down that road. And I 100% believe that he saw it because how can you see this glitter in the middle of the night? I, I it, It's just a mystery to me. It's just a mystery. But there's, there's stories all, all over about that in Joplin. Um, and Joplin is, is, is a weird place for me, I guess, um, ever since the tornado went through and, and, you know, basically took out the town and I'm going to say that, and it wasn't too long ago, it was just a couple years ago. Um, there's, there's weird feelings like the, it's, it's a weird, I, I don't know exactly how many people died during that, the, the tornado, but I mean, it's like a, a just a weird soup bowl of vibes, you know, it's just, it, I can't even explain it. It's it's a weird place, but I mean, it's a, it's really cute. They got great restaurants. Uh, Chris and I went to a restaurant there that we just fell in love with. Um, yeah, um, but it's just a weird vibe, especially when you're a sensitive and you can sense, uh, you know, uh, uh, anything there. If you if you can sense a, a spirit or anything, it's just a, a weird vibe because it's no matter where you go, it, it's it's just it don't change. 
it doesn't change. And it's just, it's just yeah. a weird place. It's, it really is. Krista, can you elaborate on that? Because I don't know how to explain that. It, it, it's just a weird. We did talk place. about you and I did just driving through the town. We were in the, in the part where the tornado went through and it was just mm -hmm. the whole vibe itself was odd, was off. Yeah. It, it's off. That's a good way to put it. It's just mm -hmm. off. And yeah. I can't, can't explain it, but it's just, but it, I mean, seriously, go to Joplin. It, it, it's a fantastic place and they've got all kinds of, of really neat things and, and uh, go see the spook light if you can. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll get to see the big one. I got to see the little fireworks, the little sparklers, but that's all I got to see. But if you, if you can go, go. And uh, like I said, David Glidden put out documentaries on the spook light. So, and uh, he also uh, was doing something like that, which led him into Bigfoot. Um, it led him into Arkansas about these light phenomena and, and led him into Bigfoot. So pay attention to that, what he's got coming out about that. I don't want to say anything because he'll get mad at me for giving the whole thing away, but, uh, check it out. Check it out. It's really cool. Well, the, the spook light phenomenon is not just you know, localized to Missouri. Uh, <laughs> they used to refer to it as the will of the wisp. Uh, they've mm -hmm. been seen all over the country, uh, in, in, mm -hmm. in, some pretty strange places, but uh, I, I've, I've never seen the one at Joplin. I've been down there looking for it, but I've never seen it. Yeah, that's what I said. He he was chasing the these lights, and which led him to Arkansas, and which led him into Bigfoot. So mm -hmm. it's it's amazing how that happened. It's it's that's really cool to hear him talk about it, and his documentary how, is well worth the watch. Yeah, it's weird how a lot of these these disciplines are overlapping. You know, like like Bigfoot is drifting into the paranormal and the paranormal is drifting into UFO. And, and yeah. you, some of the same techniques we use to investigate one are working with the other. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited for this spring when we're going to go out together and do like a multidiscipline hunt. I mm -hmm. think we're going to get some interesting findings. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I'm excited about that. Well, yeah. another another cool place in the state of Missouri that's that's creepy as shit uh, someplace I haven't had the chance to go to, uh, but I, 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 I think you two probably know way more about it than I do. And that's the Limp Mansion in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I've never spent the night there. I've went there in eight and it, it's just got a whole creepy vibe to it as well. And there are tunnels underneath, um, there as well that, um, I believe they're, they're blocked off to the public, but, um, they're supposedly really haunted as well. So, but the, the lamp, there's so much history to that place, you know, suicide and deaths and, you know, it's, it's crazy. So how can it not be haunted? Well, it's such a uh, right? really weird history of that family too. Yeah. It's well, you know, I mean, they, they, had the, they started the lamp brewery, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, it was an alcohol based family, I guess you would say, how can <laughs> it not be weird? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and then I believe they didn't they. Uh, okay, now I, I I could be totally off base on this, but I think they had a a child who was deformed or something, and he stayed up on the third floor, and I believe he's he haunts up there still, something like that. So just well, not too long ago, um, didn't they have, have a collapse in that building? What's that? I'm sorry. Uh, not too long ago, didn't they have a collapse in that building? I think so, but I think it was in the tunnels, wasn't it? It, it might have been, but I know it affected some of the building. They've they've since repaired it. They've since repaired it. Um, I I I never stayed at the Limp Mansion because it's well, it's too rich for my blood. I I yeah. <laughs> you know you're talking there. at least yeah I yeah you know, and it's pretty creepy. I mean you get weird mm -hmm. vibes just being in the building for sure. Right, right. Yeah. But I mean you you can stay there. I think they have like five rooms. Um, and two of them are supposed to be very haunted. Um, and you can look up on their website and it'll tell you which ones straight up on the website. It'll, it'll tell you which rooms are, are, are haunted. And, um, I think it's like 300 or something like that per night. I mean, it, it was outrageous the last time I looked at it. I said, oh, oh no, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, I'll look at it from the outside <laughs> or I'll go have dinner there. Yeah. We can go do lunch there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, another that place that's pretty well known in St. Louis that's haunted and people may not realize, but that's Six Flags. Six oh, Flags is haunted? Yes. 
Whoa. Yes. Oh, yeah. What? Yep. A lot of crazy stuff goes on there. My old team, uh, um, after they had closed up one evening, did an investigation there. Lots of crazy stuff. Really? I've been to that park a million times. I never knew and that. And both. Yep. Yeah, the, the stories are online. You can Google it. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. Uh, Werewolf 5674 had a question for you. He says, wouldn't spirits be displaced if the structures are destroyed? No. No. But if they, they're living in like they're still time warp. So, you know, because even though the house is gone to us, but it's still there to them. So it's it's the ground. So if they go and they build a new house there, just because the old house is gone, doesn't mean the ghost right. is gone. So now your new house chances are it's going to have a haunting as well. well. It's what we experienced at the house we lived in on the south side of town when mm -hmm. Annette saw that little girl in like yeah. like 1800 style clothing. And then I later saw her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that we, I found out that there had been a farmstead there that had burned down, you know, back in the late 1800s. So it just makes sense that if a ghost haunted a spot, it would keep haunting the same spot. Yeah, it, it's just it's just if if um, it, a house was there, and even a hundred years later, you know, you decide to build a new one there. Whatever was in that house is going to be in the new one. So if you built a house tomorrow, it's going to be in there. It's it's not going to move from that spot. You know, um, the only time that it would be displaced or moved as if it were haunting an item. Mm -hmm. So if the item was removed from the house, well, then that's a different story. But if it's if it's the property that it's on, then it's still going to be there. Then, you know, no matter what. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we, we've had cases. Oh, my house isn't that old. I'm the first owner. Nothing's ever happened here. Well, what was here right. before? Exactly. So a lot of our research has to go back to we have to go to the records and everything of, you know, what was there before, you know, who owned it or it, what was nearby even because mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be in, in in that same spot it could be something nearby that is just coming in and going out it does it doesn't have to stay in that one confined area right yep um melissa ratliff says i'm originally from salem and dent county there are a lot of sightings of sasquatch creatures and other strange creatures besides the people there <laughs> i think it's because it borders the mark twain national forest so that's just yes. another another confirmation yeah. of weird crap I have, yeah I have, I have a lot of family in salem and there are some weirdos down there <laughs> you want to see some, meet some weird folks go to Ava. my family lives there they're weird. Ava, <laughs> I, I've, I, yeah, I've been to Ava, Missouri a lot because we used to show horses. We used to show there. So, yeah. Here's a here's another uh, a paranormal hotspot for you in, here in Missouri. The Pythian Castle. I know that place very well. And that's just and shame I'm, on I'm, you, DA, for not going. Shame I'm, I'm on not you. A, not even a mile from it. I mean, I, I know. That's in, what I said. Shame minutes. on you for not going. Honestly, yeah, I, I get place, it. every time I've been over there, it's been closed. I just never had any contacts to get in. Well, well, you you know someone now who knows someone. Well, we definitely yeah. need to do that. <laughs> the the <laughs> Pythian Castle. It it uh, Tamara and her mother bought the place, and I can't remember what year it was. Um, it's in the two thousands, and um, she was looking for like an Airbnb. Um, and she lived in California. Her and her mom did. She bought the Pythian sight unseen. And um, moved here and um, they bought it for like $200,000, but it needed a lot of repair. And and I, I will tell you, the place is absolutely beautiful on the inside. They have done an amazing job in restoring it. But it was Knights of the Pythian. And, and it was also, there was a, a, a back with World War II, um, it was a, a lot of people don't know, it was a German um, POWs were kept there. They held German and oh. Japanese POWs there. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And yep. that's so a lot of the reports that they're the hearing. Yeah. If you go downstairs. It was also an orphanage for a while. It was. Yes. And and they actually, um, they do, when they do the tour, there was a, a, a boy's uh, staircase and then there's the girl's staircase. And, and um, there's lots of uh, back in the day, like Bob Hope, you know, had, has performed there and been there many times. And it's a beautiful, beautiful building. I mean, she has done amazing work with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend it. Now, I will tell you this, Zach Bagans on his show, he did the Pythian Castle and said there's a demon. I will tell you there is no demons at the Pythian Castle. 
So ignore mm-hmm. what he says. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, don't even like to, I don't like to knock television shows on public air. But of all the, the, the paranormal shows, that show carries the least amount of water with me. Because yeah. at some point in every episode, that Zach guy is going to say, just then, at that exact moment, he's going to make that <laughs> statement every show, and the bald it, guy is going to run over the cameraman. <laughs> right? Happens right. in every episode. I'm, honestly, you know, I'm, I'm not knocking them because some of their shows, their their episodes have been pretty entertaining. You know, I've been pretty good, and they go to some pretty cool locations. But I, I, I know on that particular episode, there, I had, I remember there was an uproar because supposedly there was a demon there that he said there was a one there but i've been there countless countless times and never ever run no. out there no and not everything's demonic that's right but that gets that gets great ratings on tv that's why mm-hmm. i don't in most tv shows i don't give them much credibility because yeah. they're there to entertain and get ratings they're they're not really there to provide any real truth even the cryptid shows uh you get better Bigfoot documentaries on YouTube than you're going to find on any of the networks. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, the, and going back to the Pythian Castle, they also have a tunnel underneath, and it used to run back to the military place behind there, and it stops. It's about 100 feet long, and um, it's pitch black, and you, you walk down there, you know, you got to have flashlights, but it's uh, – it's uh, it's creepy. You can hear footsteps walking behind you. So a lot of people don't want to be on the end, you know, when you got a group of people going down there. So if you're going first, when you turn around, because there's no room to move to change position. So if you go first on the way back, you're in the back, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Brandy, you've been there, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Plenty of times. Yeah. 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 Um, I went down that tunnel and and of Me course, too. I'm either first or last. It, it, it's, and, it's and it doesn't bother me though. It, it really no. doesn't bother me. You know, I've taken a lot of groups down there and, and I always tell people, okay, this is the deal. When you come down at the end, you know, we got to turn around. So make sure you're comfortable with, you know, being the one at the end. But on, honestly, you know, there's um, the, the, the only place that, that's, that has like kind of a, um, I guess you would call him a nasty, but he is a human spirit and he's up in the tower. And um, he was a pedophile back in the day when he lived there. So, yeah. That goes back to the, if you're an a-hole in life, you're an a-hole in death. Yep. It's That's just the way it is. Yeah. But so. I've had my hair pulled there. I've been touched there. My daughter-in-law had her hair really tugged there. Um, I, I highly recommend it. I know she does day tours too. So if you get a chance to go do a day tour and just look at the building, I mean, the history, it's, it's, absolutely a beautiful building yeah and don't be surprised if you get thumped on the back of your head just a little yep yeah i I definitely do that to me all the time so i'm kind of used to it (laughs) yeah but when nobody's behind you you're like huh Mm -hmm. (laughs) wait a minute that didn't you know who just did that but yeah it's i've got to have a couple times in the head (laughs) what did i say Yeah, but it, it's happened to me a couple times. Uh, I've been just tapped in the back of the head, just walking through somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, ah, look what I can do. Boom. Yeah, and and all parts of that building are haunted. And and actually, mm-hmm. Tamara, her mother recently passed away last year there, so she's not there anymore. But um, Tamara lives there by herself, and she's got a couple dogs and some cats, and uh, she's got her living quarters, and and there's activity in her area too, quite a bit. So. Mm-hmm. But they they have done a, a wonderful job in restoring yeah. that place. It, it, yeah, they they've done a great job. It's beautiful on the inside. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to go. Yeah. Um, Missouri is just riddled with places like that. More than yeah. people realize. Um, yeah. There's a lot of history yeah. here in Missouri. Uh, supposedly, there is also a ghost inside the dam down at Bagnell Dam. Oh wow! I haven't heard that. I have I not been, been able either. to get in there. Uh, but I've heard stories from people that used to work there that there's a ghost that can be seen walking around like he's checking pipes. Uh, they think it was one of the workmen that died during the construction of the dam. Because mm-hmm. there were several. Oh. Huh. I, have, I, I didn't know about that. You know what? I you know, getting no. inside Bagnell Dam would be tough. You really got to know somebody. Now, yeah. this is yeah. weird. I have heard a story. Um, 
I, and man, it's been years, but somebody was swimming somewhere not too far from Bagnell Dam, like around their boat, you know, and like they felt something like pulling on them under the water. And they, they were saying it was like, you know, kind of like paranormal type, you know, is what they thought. So, so it could be, you know, makes me where I'm not going to go swim around Bagnell Dam. I can tell you that. <laughs> my, uh, my grandfather actually helped build that dam. <laughs> yeah. Really? My, my grandfather helped build that dam. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he was one it's of like, a, I'm crazy, but I'm not stupid. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm not exactly. going back there. Thanks. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So it's crazy. Crazy stuff. A lot of weird stuff around here. Yeah. And, you know, that, that's, again, that's just, just touching the surface. I mean, mm -hmm. there, there's so many places. And I know it, technically it's not in Missouri. It's just on the other side of the border. Uh, Eureka Springs, Arkansas is just a rock throw across the border mm -hmm. from Missouri into oh, Arkansas. Yeah. And yeah. that whole town is creepy at night. No, and that's not even taking into account the, the the Crescent Hotel. That hotel will give you the heat. It's, it's haunted, hands down. It is haunted, hands down. I'm here. I can validate it. I can testify. It is. It is haunted. And if anybody goes, I stayed in room two twenty six. That is in. It's in a like on the corner in one of those hallways. Now, I caught a magnificent picture of uh, some manifestations out there. Uh, I've heard stuff, but 226, if you can get that room, get that room. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right there, it's it's only a queen size bed. So it just bring one other person. You're not going to get a whole lot in there. But that is hands down one of the haunted hotels I've been in that I can testify is absolutely haunted. There, there's no doubt. No doubt. David Buy says that town's creepy during the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you if you go from the Crescent Hotel hotel down to the Basin Hotel, well, they're they're like sisters. They're sister hotels. Um, that has its own haunted history. That is, I'm telling you, if you can stay at that hotel, stay at that hotel if you want to stay where it's haunted, um, because they have their underground tunnels there too, um, that go underneath all of Eureka Springs. And um, you can actually get free rides from the base into the Crescent if you're staying at either hotel. So you can go and visit each each hotel you want to. And every night they have tours of, of the hotels and they also have um, tours of the city if you want to do that. Um, I did both, you know, just, you know, I want to see what they're talking about. But I absolutely recommend going there to anyone. Anyone. I, I like I like Eureka Springs. It's a neat little town. And incidentally, it's a pretty town. My favorite, it is a pretty little town. It's got mm -hmm. one of my favorite barbecue places of all of, of of all the places I've been is one of my top five favorite barbecue places. And that's the Rock and Pig Saloon. Amazing <laughs> yeah. barbecue. Yeah. So good I put it, it in a book. Yeah, and it's tucked away. Yep. It's like in its own little little area. It, it, it you wouldn't know anything know where existed. It's at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so not, you, you wouldn't know anything you, else existed. You just spot it driving by. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because you have to kind of go down this little <clears throat> two-lane road, and, and it looks like a neighborhood to actually get downtown. When you're first coming in, you're like, okay, that's kind of weird. But, I mean, it's it's a great place. I do recommend it to, to anybody. If, if you're hey, in Arkansas... Hey. DA, do you have uh, Brandy's pictures? Because Nana Boss asked what evidence... Did she get? And that's a great I, picture. Do you have that don't, one? Don't the one that's blown up. It. Yeah, with the the one that's blown up, not the one that's. Girl. I I might have it here on my phone. Let me look, and I can resend it to you. But uh, that's a, yeah. a great picture. Yeah, because if you can if you can send the one that's blown up. You know what? I do have it on the computer. I'll get it sent right now. Just give me a yeah, minute. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. okay. And in the meantime, I'll be look. I'll look for it here too. I'll send it to you. Is that the the the, the ghost picture? Yeah, with the yes at Eureka okay, Springs. Let me find it. No, I've at got the it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. If you can find, I'm I'm looking too, and I can resend it to you real quick too. You may have to because yeah. I'm not finding yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> now with this picture that they're they're trying to send, it is uh right out my door about ten steps. Mm-hmm. 
So, I mean, this is why I'm talking about I stayed in room 226. If you can get that room or anywhere right there, get it. Get it. Get in that hallway. Yeah, because the pictures is one of the best paranormal pictures I've seen. Yeah, you're going to have to send it to me. I can't find it. Yep, I'm bringing it up here. Yeah, it, it should come up quick. Yeah, this was, uh, and it was unexpected because when I took the picture, I, I wasn't even, I didn't see what was in my picture until I looked at it the next day. I was just taking pictures. I, I did not see the, 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 what was happening in the picture. Now in the picture, there are two people who- I just sent them to you at DA. Yeah. Okay, yep, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen. Okay. And I just sent it to you through Messenger. Yeah, I I'm going to share the screen because that way I can just blow it up myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. This is yep. it. Yep, this yeah. is it. And look at it. You can't see nothing from there. There's right. nothing. Hang on, but me, he's uh, going to go ahead and blow that up. Let me download that real quick. <laughs> okay, now. Do you see her right there? Most you can see my silhouette, and of course you can see my crazy hair. Okay, you can see my crazy hair. Now I'm taking a picture of the outside. My daughter is actually standing right behind me because I told her to stand behind me because you can already see me and I didn't want another silhouette in there. But sh her right there showed up in that picture. Now, in the original picture, she is just as bright and beautiful and uh, just vibrant. I have never seen anything manifest that beautifully. Mm -hmm. I, I, and it's unbelievable. Now, if you look to the other side of me, you can uh, kind of see right there. Uh, there's this little white manifestation. Do I think you're going to have to back up just a hair on that? But it, it seems to be wearing a hat. If you can see that. Yeah, I can see like the brim of the hat right there. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Yep. That's the it right there. The there. Yep. Now, if you look, if you look towards the middle of the screen, those people right there, uh, the guy in the black, they're He's real. Living. They're yeah. li they're living. Now, the one in the white hat is another manifestation. What about this okay. right here? He's they're living. the ones that are living. Okay, all right. They're living. Yes, they were just so having to walk like by the hallway. There. Right now, um, I did get that, questioned about if there's the pictures in the. One. Right. I did get questions like, is there pictures in the hallway, this, that, and the other? I did a live video the very next day, and there are absolutely no pictures. There is no furniture. There are no flowers. There is nothing in that hallway. Nothing. Anywhere. So I took, I took this picture, and then I showed the... Um, I went downstairs and I showed it to the front desk clerk there and they had me send it to their people. So they're having it uh, uh, validated you know, was, that, that it's a real picture. But yeah, that what? is two manifestations caught in one picture in two different styles of manifestations. One is right. more like a ghostly figure, but the other one looks like she's standing there right with me. Now, you but know, you've heard those stories. Hat, though. That's the thing. Look, she's got some kind of a gown on. Looks like her yeah. hair is nicely done. And she looks she's like she's got a off. necklace on. Yeah, it's not right. her bottom. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And That's I mean. That is such a cool picture. Yep. It's one of the best paranormal pictures I've seen in a long time. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's at that Crescent, the Crescent Hotel. Yeah. <clears throat> so, it, like I said, I mean, that is the most amazing picture I've ever captured, that I've got two manifestations in the same picture, two different ways. And it was just like, wow, I've got one in full color. Because, you know, people, they, they'll say, oh, yeah, I thought they were a real person. 
they asked me, you know, they told me hi and I told them hi back. And then I realized they were just gone. They disappeared. That was that woman. It was like, it, it, she was so vibrant. It was like, she was just standing there in the room and in the picture. But to the other one, that is, is more like a ghostly figure, that white misty, you can make out the apparition that it is a person. That's what most people think of as when they think of a ghost. So it was absolutely just an awesome, awesome time that I had there. The sheer number of people who've passed away in the Crescent Hotel over the last 150 years, 200 years since it was built is just astounding because it was one time, one time used by a, a, a charlatan healer uh, who claimed that the, the spring waters there were the cure for cancer and claimed he was a doctor and people from all over the country came there to be cured and he wasn't curing anybody. He was just getting rich and he was injecting people with all, all sorts of weird chemicals, killed a bunch of them. Yes. You know, that no, same thing really happened. Sure. That same thing happened in Excelsior Springs at the Hall of Waters. So mm -hmm. people used to go there for the same and they would do all these awful things to them, you know, and they were thinking they were there getting cured and they and they they weren't, you know. You know, and, and you think about it, these doctors, these place. Yeah, these fake doctors are showing up. I, I mean, you think about it, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Eureka mm -hmm. Springs. Arkansas, then Hall of Waters. I mean, when they start getting the waters involved and then all of a sudden there's this crazy person going, well, these waters are healing. I can heal you with these waters. It's it's just amazing how these how these people just flock to these natural springs and things thinking that they're they're, you know, the cure all, that they're going to cure any disease that you have and then the people that prayed on them going, yeah, I can I'll heal you all right. Here, right. drink this. <laughs> yeah, it's people, it's just amazing. People, how yeah. many people died searching for the fountain of youth? Right, right, and, and and that's exactly why people were flocking to all of these places with these natural springs, thinking that this is the cure all, that they're right. going to be healed with this water. And yeah. nobody really ever got cured, especially there at the Crescent Hotel. Uh, they they with had all the no minerals, idea they, the exact number of people that died there. Yeah, yeah. With all the minerals, they probably had some nice hair and some good skin. That's probably all they walked away with, if they walked away at all. Right. Uh, and, and they, uh, it was routine for them to take the bodies out at night. And people in the Crescent Hotel have refer re reported hearing those old time gurneys squeaking down the hallway. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like I said, that that hotel is is. Woo! Yeah, I do recommend it. I do recommend it. I mean, I didn't run into anything scary, and I'm I wasn't scared at at any point, at any point. But I mean, I did wake up in the middle of the night. I could hear people talking. I kind of looked out to see if anybody was out there. Nobody's out there. I mean, you do have that. You hear the footsteps, and all of that, and you look out again. There's nobody there. There's nobody walking, and I mean, they they sound like they're right at your door. Annette and I so. walked around that, that the hotel one time. I wanted to get her to stay there, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. you know she she picks up on stuff like that. I generally don't. But mm -hmm. um, we we went in to see about getting a tour, and the lady's like, "Oh, we're not doing tours right now." And uh, you know, I said, "I said, well, we drove up from Springfield. We wanted to hoping we could look around." And at first, she was going to say no, but I, I I think I reached for my wallet or something. I don't remember what I was reaching for, but she saw my badge clipped to my belt. She's like, mm -hmm. well, you're a cop. I said, yeah, I'm a deputy sheriff out of, out of Greene County, Missouri. And she said, uh, she goes, oh, well, then I'm not worried about you messing around with anything. We've got a couple of weddings going on. So any of the areas that are roped off, don't go in there, but you're free to walk around the rest of the hotel. I'm like, really? She said, yeah, absolutely. So Annette and I walked around for a while and she told us which rooms were the most haunted. And we went up to one of the rooms on the, I think it was on the second floor. It might've been the room you stayed in, but I didn't say that we, we walked up and it was kind of, it was down the main hallway and then you turned right and then you turned kind of right again. And uh, she, we walked up to the door and she put her hand on the door and she said it felt like electricity running up her arm. And uh, it's, she was ready it to sounds go. like it. It sounds like the room I stayed in. And she said she was ready to go and I have not been able to get her to go back since. Yeah, I stayed in room 226, but one of the most haunted rooms on that floor is 217. And that's just, that's straight on the straight long hallway there. 
-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it sounds like you went right to the door that I stayed at. Yeah, we, uh, she, she said the place, whole place gave her the heebie-jeebies. And we've driven by it to, like, show it to the boys and stuff, but she has no desire to go back inside. I'm like, come on, I want to spend the night. She's like, no, 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 I'm not spending the night. Right, right. Um, but, you know, I did, like I said, I took the picture down to the front desk clerk, and she's like, you know what? You know who she kind of looks like, and they have the pictures, because it used to be a girls' school in the wintertime. It used mm -hmm. to be a resort during the summertime and then a girls' school uh, during the winter. And she said, it looks like that woman in that picture that they have sitting up on a shelf. And it's over there by a desk, and they have all their merchandise and everything there. And I went over there, and it sure did look like her. But, I, you know, I, I, can't, I can't say anything else because they didn't know her name at the time. And, like I said, I sent the picture in, so they, I haven't got a, any calls back on it yet. But uh, hopefully they'll use it. I mean, it, it's a fantastic shot. You can't get any better than that. That is a great shot. Except well, for Zombie so, Road. Yeah, except for Zombie Road. That's another one we need to talk about. I know we <laughs> yeah. talked about it here recently. I still have those pictures in the queue. I can I can put those right up. Uh, but I was kind of hoping as to wait for that. As soon as Krista pops back in, we'll we'll talk about Zombie Road because that picture is one of the most amazing ones I've ever seen. The one of Zombie Road. It's, yeah, it's that is just, such a good picture. Yeah, I can't even ex explain how they would do that besides messing with the film. But like I said, with with even with my picture, I had to send it in to make sure that you know they're sending it to their people to make sure it wasn't messed with or altered. Mm -hmm. So, and then this one was uh, verified that it, it it's a it's a pic it's a true picture. It wasn't hasn't been altered. So, geez, you have to go through a lot, and it takes a while. Oh, there she is. I'm back. Sorry. I tried to plug into an extension cord and it didn't work. So Yeah, mine's to... about ready to go dead too. <laughs> yeah. I got about 20%. Are we needing to wrap it up? Well, let's talk about Zombie Road and then we okay. can wrap it up. All right. Uh, another creepy as hell place in the state of Missouri is Zombie Road. It's uh, just outside of St. Louis. It's actually part of a park now, so it's a little, little tough to get into. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still have those pictures loaded, and mm -hmm. uh, I thought I, you know, since you guys have actually been there and I have not, uh, I want to I talk have, to I have not been there. I'm the only one that hasn't been there, so we need to go. Yeah, I want to go. An awesome place. Yeah, it's full of activity. Right. And well, honestly, I could see where a cryptid could even live out there. And and yeah, uh, my right. friend. Where DA he had told you about his encounter um, with possible Sasquatch because it runs the mm -hmm. Merrimack River runs along right there, right? And uh, it was Zombie Road area where he seen that. So, yeah, well, this picture is amazing. Yeah. Uh, this picture is the one we're talking about. Yep. Picking up Great. shadow people. You notice that none of them are reflecting in the water. Mm-hmm. Pretty crazy picture. This is one of the creepiest pictures I've ever seen. Yeah. And the, Me too. you said you those those weren't visible to the naked eye. Nope. Those only appeared on the on the camera screen. On the camera. On the camera. Yep. yep. But so the guy that that took that picture, he had a knack for taking these pictures. So he would get a feeling, and he would point the camera that away. And that's how he did. He also won an award for the picture. I don't know if anybody's ever seen the picture of the girl at Waverly Hills, but he took that one also just on a hunch. And same thing with this. He just had a hunch to start snapping pictures in that area. And that's how he captured this. Unfortunately, he's, he's passed away now, but yeah. Yeah. Well, that's but unfortunate. He would have been a great guy to have on the show. Oh, heck yeah. He was a great guy. I, I actually knew him. Yeah. This picture is just so freaking creepy. Especially yeah. since, you know, nobody nobody saw them physically. Being fully yeah. silhouetted by the moon like that, but nobody sees them and they yeah. show up on the film. Yeah. And they cast no reflection. Right. No reflection. There's no reflection. Mm -mm. Nope. And then there's this one, the black figure on the bridge. Mm -hmm. Right yeah, in same, the middle. Same guy, same guy took that picture as well. And did that one show up with the naked eye? No. Nope. He just would get these feelings and, you know, then he would 
point the camera that way and he would get these phenomenal pictures. I mean, he's gotten, there's several, um, he was on, on the team that I used to be on and um, he's, he's, there's a lot of good pictures on that, on their site because of him that he's taken. What do you think that is? I think it's a shadow person. Mm -hmm. 100%. I would agree. Yeah. yeah. Definitely a manifestation. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yep. 110 percent. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty crazy road. I mean, you you and it's it's hiking trails. It's a, a St. Louis County Park, you know, and, and there's a lot of hiking trails in there and, and uh, people walk it and bike ride it. And, you know, and there's two entrances. There's a railroad entrance and then there's uh, you can go up to the school and come in from the other way. So and I've been both I, ways. I definitely want to go down there. Mm hmm. There's yeah. just so many awesome places here in Missouri that, that are just right. so creepy and not just cryptid oriented, but paranormal. And even like you were saying, the, the uh, an Area 51 type area right, right. here in Missouri. Yeah, um, right. And, yeah. And lights are seen over you know, Whiteman Air Force Base and down near Cape Girardeau. Uh, when and don't people to, say even there at Fort Leonard Wood, a lot of cryptids and stuff are seen? Mm -hmm. in there's that been area. a lot of cryptid signings on Fort Leonard Wood. Yeah. So Missouri is a weird, weird place. Uh, I know there were a couple of cryptid sightings told to me when I was stationed at Fort Leonard Wood. That was back in the late 80s. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, I was a I was a youngster back then, but uh, you know, I, I always ask people about it. Uh, there was one guy that got screamed at when guarding when he was on guard duty on what we used to call the million dollar hole. It was basically just this old pit that they would make you stand guard duty on for no stupid reason because nobody in the right mind wanted to mess with it. But it was chained off and you weren't supposed to get in there. So they would make us idiots have to stand guard duty out there. And one guy that was on guard duty one night had something scream at him and like run right. at him in the woods, but it never came out where he could see it. And he right. goes, I'm damn glad it didn't because I didn't actually have live ammo. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> crazy that's stuff. That's the first on my checklist. <laughs> yeah you know like like i said earlier you know this is just missouri we've touched on you know there's like i, I said sure you can you can yeah yeah i'm sure yeah. it's like this google in every state paranormal or cryptid and your state mm -hmm. and you're going to get a lot more than you realize yeah. Yeah. uh yeah. there's another place we need to go to um uh that you that uh that i want to get you two to go with us uh, it's not far from here in Springfield. It's about halfway between Springfield and Joplin. It's called a villa or a via. I don't know how it's pronounced. A V I L L A. It's mm -hmm. a ghost town. There's still a few people that live in and around the area, but it was basically boarded up overnight after uh, route, uh, route 66 changed directions and became I 44. Mm -hmm. It's an old Route 66 town. The old businesses are all still there and boarded up. And people that drive through the area at dusk report seeing shadow people walking between the buildings. Wow, Ooh. that's crazy. Yeah, that sounds like fun. I'm game. Yeah, Let's do it. Yeah, it's not <laughs> far from here. It's maybe a 30-minute drive from Springfield. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm game. Anytime. Yeah, that's me. It's like, it's like, what? There's shadow people. Okay, that sounds like fun. Let's and go. If, I, <laughs> if I can get permission, I've got I've to find... Uh, contact with the company that owns it because it's it's it was bought by a company that owns a rock quarry. It's owned by Conco Concrete here in Springfield. But I've got to I've got to basically I'm gonna have to go out there and ask somebody. I think because uh, I've yeah. called a few times and kind of got the run around. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a, a ghost town right there on their property called Phoenix, Missouri, and it's been abandoned for. God, probably a hundred years. I mean, the place has been empty for a long time. And yeah. it was right outside of the town I used to patrol, Walnut Grove. It was literally a rock mm -hmm. throw distance outside of Walnut Grove. Walnut Grove is another creepy haunted area we we need to, to, to go check because back when the railroad nexus was at Walnut Grove, before the railroads pulled out of that area, that was where uh, mass graves were put in place from the cholera outbreak in Missouri in the 1880s. Uh, yeah. There were tr train train car loads of bodies brought from both St. Louis and Kansas City mm -hmm. and buried there. Uh, wow. I can take you right to the mass graves. Wow. Uh, and, and, and a good friend of mine's the chief of police out there, my old chief, mm -hmm. and he he would just delight in taking us around to these haunted yeah. places. Well, there's a yeah. there's another place too. Um, 
the let your viewers know that for those that are in the Kansas City area, and it's a Kansas City park, and that is Shoal Creek Living History Museum. I have done numerous ghost hunts out there, and, and what it is is all these buildings are, are from the area, but they were all, all moved on this in this park and you know to make it look like an old town, an old town, literally, essentially. And every every building has its history. And um, oh my gosh, every building out there is crazy haunted and and even the woods out there. And and um, so anybody in the Kansas City area, I highly recommend just going through the day, walking through and and um Shoal Creek Living History Museum. It's it's cool places, cool building. We could we could literally go out someplace in Missouri every weekend and it'd be yeah. months before we ran out of places to go. Yep. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. But absolutely. I just, I, ju I just want to let everybody know while while we're talking about places to go, always get permission. Always yeah. have permission. Um, yep. A lot of people just think, oh well, that's an abandoned house. I can just go in there. No, you can't. You that's will be arrested. Yes. Right. Uh, you know. So just make sure that you always have permission or that it's open to the public. So yeah. that's where you go in the United States. But I, I will tell anybody on the St. Louis side, interested in Zombie Road, anybody on the Kansas City side, they're both, uh, you know, county parks. So they're open during the day. Yeah. You know, you can just yeah. go through and walk through them. Werewolf 5674 says you ladies need to do a tour book. <laughs> yeah. Just, kind of like you know, we're in Missouri. But yeah. I think you guys, <laughs> you guys could, could pull off a big one. Um, yeah. One There'd be a I lot to tell. tell. Oh, heck yeah. One thing I wanted to touch on before I go, and I've seen a few comments about, about my books in, 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 the, uh, in the chat tonight. Um, and uh, if you guys are in the Springfield, Missouri area or within short driving distance, uh, there is an event uh, that's coming up in a few weeks. It's called Geekmas. It's like Geek Christmas. Uh, but we are going to be doing, uh, we're going to be in a, making an appearance there with my books. I just posted the link. It's called fanaticsandthefans.net slash geekmas. Uh, you click on that. You can buy your tickets to see the event. It's a three-day event. Uh, the, 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 it's a promoting the charity for Toys for Tots. Uh, so it's a, it's a great event to, to, to support mm -hmm. local Toys for Tot Drive. And I'll be there uh, with all my books. And, you know, uh, I've got patches. And we'll be talking about the podcast. We might even, do, we might even go live from there. Uh, so who knows? I mean, it depends on how good the internet is. So we'll have to see. But um, you yeah, know, definitely, if you guys are anywhere near the Springfield area and you would like to possibly get a, a, a book for somebody for Christmas, we'll have uh, we'll have all the books at the table and would love to sit and chat uh, chat about cryptids and, and mm -hmm. ghosts and haunted Missouri. If anybody wants to pop by, uh, you know, swing by. We'll have a cup of coffee and we'll talk creepy Missouri or creepy anywhere really. Yeah. I love talking cryptids and get me to shut up about it's the hard part. Um, <laughs> and hopefully you guys will be there. Hopefully you guys can pop down for. Yeah, you did day. send me the link. So yes, I have yet yeah. to have a chance to talk to Aaron and Brandy about it. Yeah, we no, haven't got super chat. Our act together. Thank you, Robin. I'm sorry, right. Brandy. Go ahead. I said we we haven't got our act together just yet about that, but. <laughs> well, we would love to see you guys down here. And I'll, yeah. we'll take we'll take you guys over to that place where I, we go for Thai food that always sets me on fire. <laughs> you know, I do have to drive home. I don't think that would be safe. <laughs> right. I don't really need to stop good. every. every you just gotta be careful how hot you order it. Yeah. Well, it, you know, there's a long stretch of road that has no bathrooms, so <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> but anyway um next friday just a, just a shout out and i'm going to shameless plug ourselves but uh next friday well, we're going to have a guest on uh and she has been basically been haunted or something that she has is haunted for a very long time she doesn't know what it is so we're going to sit down with her we're going to talk about it we're going to try and unravel it live what what what's going on Mm -hmm. So, um, she's not told anybody this story um, publicly. I, I know about it um, because I've known her for a few years. Um, I know about it, but her story is is fantastic. So, um, we're going to help her try to figure out what's really um, going the on. haunting. Yeah, what's really the haunting? We don't know. She doesn't if it's know her if it's or herself or, or an item or a house or, or what. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. We'll have to figure so, it out. So, uh, yeah, the show is called Is She Haunted? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, would one of the one of the uh, mods in the chat, Tombstone Meg, one of you guys, would you post the link to Blondes and Booze? Uh, so people woo. can like, share, and subscribe. Blondes and Boo, hey, Blondes and Booze in the Woo, but post a link to their their YouTube channel uh, so it's people can like and, and subscribe. Yeah, yeah Blondes and Booze. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. There it is. They already got it up there. Tune, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, they have been having it. They've been having it all there. night. They they've been on it. Yeah. You've yeah. got some good ones yep. out there. They've been on yeah, it. They are they are on it. And Robbie, before uh, before we start wrapping up, tell us about your podcast as well. Uh, we just uh, did two more episodes that we are that I set to. I think one came out yesterday. And we got one coming out Monday. We just did uh, Loch Ness and Thun well, Loch Ness and other uh, marine type cryptids and Thunderbirds. That'll be the next mm -hmm. one that comes out. Um, and and honestly, I, I'll just chime in here. I've listened to your shows and and they're pretty darn good. Gotta say, well, thank you. <laughs> it's just just like it's just like this. We just we sit around and talk, except we mm -hmm. just don't put a camera on our face. We just record right. it. <laughs> It's pretty mm -hmm. much, all, and uh, got to get with Norm because uh, probably won't have won't be able to record one Tuesday because I've got a we've got reserve classes and defensive tactics are coming up, so I've got to start teaching that. So maybe one other one day this week, other than our normal recording day, I'm gonna have to get with Norm and see what what we can do. But uh, we got a few a uh, few things floating around that we're thinking about we hadn't got anything nailed down um i want to start trying to get some people in we i've there's a lot of people that i've talked to that's got some stories uh you know one of them chris is, she's in chat earlier tonight it's just it's working out everybody's schedule to where they can come mm -hmm. in yep yeah well said um actually um i like to get brandon to come and talk about some of the stuff too mm -hmm. i mean yeah you know, He's just right down the road, apparently. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> like to get yeah, him in yeah. and talk about. Some well, I'm stuff. looking forward to your next episode. Anyway, whenever you come out with it, just let us know when it's going to be. You know, when you get it figured out. Yeah, uh, and just know, one just definitely hit. share the links on blondes too. You're okay. more than welcome to share all your stuff on there. Too. On our page, yeah, share that. it on our page. That way, yeah. that we can keep got up. It up. Got it out right now. That's um, mm -hmm. he's been he's been doing it all night too. So appreciate that. Yep. Um, I know they're great mods. They've been on it all night long. Yep. Mm -hmm. Got some good people on the mod staff. They're awesome. You do. Yes. Um, one other thing I wanted to, wanted to, to uh, touch on real quick before uh, before we start wrapping things up is this coming Thursday, uh, this coming to Wednesday night, uh, which when we would normally have a show, we will not be having a show because I've got family coming in town for Thanksgiving. Uh, so we'll have a house full, and it would be really loud to try to probably do a show. Uh, and even with sound baffling, it would probably be too loud. Mm -hmm. Plus, I want to, you know, I haven't seen my oldest son in a couple of months, and I'd like to spend some time with him. Uh, so we're going to have family in town, and uh, we won't be doing a, a show next uh, next this coming Wednesday. Uh, but uh, this coming the, the following Saturday, we will have a show. Uh, so guys, make sure you look out for that. Um, since this is the Thanksgiving holiday and we're, you know, we're looked back at the, uh, the Thanksgiving, um, I want to let, let everybody know that, uh, that I am thankful for each and every one of you. I am thankful for all of you who have chosen to spend time with us. I'm thankful for everyone that's, that's, you know, read books by this, this little scribbler that, you know, grew up on a farm just north of Lebanon, Missouri. I'm amazed to see how far these books have come in 10 years, and I can't wait to see where the next 10 take us. So I want to just know, we'll let everyone know how much, how thankful I am for every one of you. Brandy, Krista, mm -hmm. that, that includes you guys. Yep. I'm so thankful right. to have met such, such amazing people on this journey. And uh, I, 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 I've met people that will be lifelong friends, people I consider family. Uh, and it's, it's been fantastic. And I'm, I'm so thankful for that. But in the spirit of Thanksgiving, since that dates back to the time of the pilgrims next Saturday night, we are going to be delving into an, a mystery from that era. We're going to be discussing the lost colony of Roanoke. So I oh, hope you guys, yeah. hope you guys will join us. 
Uh, it's going to be an interesting night. If you guys want to pop in, you are more than welcome. You guys are always welcome. Just yeah. consider it an open invitation. Any night you all want to jump in on a show, Sounds just good. say, hey, you got a topic I'm interested in. I want to jump in, and you are 100% always welcome. Appreciate that. Same um, for you guys time. with us. For sure. So uh, you know, we got a country boy, Krypton, said happy Thanksgiving. Um, yep. Also, uh, Thank nine you. area there. Uh, Melissa and her husband, uh, we, we met them at the Dogman Conference. Uh, just awesome people. Her husband has uh, had some surgery on his foot. And uh, when, when he's up and around and, and, and doing better, we're going to have them on the show to talk about their Dogman experiences. So we'll be lining well, that out here in the next few oh, days. Yeah, so that's really, really got some, some great stuff coming up, folks. Uh, can't wait for you guys to, to join us. Um, and we've got some some awesome haunted crap here in Missouri. I, I, used to, I, I just, you know, I should probably should, shouldn't say crap. We've got some amazing haunted stuff here in Missouri that I can't wait to go check out with these two ladies. And, and Robbie, if he can make it out this way from out south, out south Crackalacky. And uh, Doc was having some internet issues, so he had to bow out. Uh, so, you know, again, thanks to Doc. But before we go, let's take a big thank to our sponsor. Thank you to our sponsors. Make sure you guys uh, go by uh, over at scallywagtactical.com and use the discount code DA Roberts 10 for 10% off your order. Uh, if one of the mods would throw that link up in the chat, I would be much grateful. Also throw Dark Angel Medicals up as well. Um, a bit, another big thanks to the folks at Dark Angel Medical. I know they've given us a lot of stuff we've given away over the over time, and we'll probably be doing that again here soon. We're at 3,600 subscribers on YouTube. We will have Yay. a pretty big shindig when we hit 5,000, which I originally thought I would say 4,000, but as fast as we went from 1,000 to 3,600, I think we're going to do the next big giveaway at 5,000, uh, and we are closing in awesome. on that, folks. And that is 100% thanks to all of y'all. Uh, if it weren't for you guys coming around, hanging around, hanging out and listening to us talk about crazy stuff, uh, none of this would even be possible. Uh, so and I'm, thank you I'm guys. I'm still not saying it, by the way. <laughs> well, eventually you will. Yep. It'll happen. Well, it don't matter if I say it. It's just if anybody else says it. <laughs> anybody else says it. Huh? But, uh, yeah, we, uh, we've got a lot, of, a lot of great shows lined up in the coming weeks and uh, even beyond. Uh, got some stuff in the works that I don't want to announce yet because I don't, I don't want to jinx it. Keep my fingers crossed. Cause I got a couple things in the works that again, I, if I say it out loud, it won't happen. Um, so again, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Thank you guys so much for spending time with us, uh, spending this Saturday evening with us again, no show on Wednesday night, uh, because of Thanksgiving, the holiday, uh, we're going to be with our family. We want you all to be with your family, but remember you guys are family to us. And we will uh, be glad to see you guys again next Saturday night. And I hope you will join us when we start talking about the lost colony of Roanoke. And we're going to dig into that mystery and chew on it like a dog on a bone. So got a lot of theories, a lot of stuff to talk about. And again, Brandy, Christy, you guys are welcome to jump in if you want. Uh, you, you guys are family here at the DAX Maka Nation. So Thank anytime you. you guys want to jump in, you got a standing invite. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony couldn't make it tonight. He was out looking at new vehicles. So hope he bought a truck and he'll be, hopefully he'll be back with us next Saturday. But uh, he's he's doing better. They they had some storm damage, but all that's taken care of. Um, Steve was unable to join us tonight because him and his wife were in Kansas. Uh, so hopefully next week he'll be able to join us and uh, get the whole family of the DAX Maka Nation back together and be wild and crazy and act like idiots and maybe have a few drinks on the air and just you know, have a good old time. So again, thank you guys for joining us. I know this is an Ozarks good night. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody, and we will see you guys again on Saturday night. Good night, good night. everybody. Night. Thank you for joining us. Catch us again Wednesdays and Saturdays on DAX Machina. A special thanks to all our channel members and Patreon supporters. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe.